What's going on everybody? Um, I just realized that before going live, I didn't change the latency, so there will be a 20 second delay. So if you say something and I reply uh, 20 seconds later, or if I, yeah, something like that. Uh, apologies, I normally uh, change that prior, but there was so much happening before this stream that I didn't get a chance to. Um, today, we are going to be building this small resin printer called the uh, Piapoli Phenom Forge. Uh, which I'm really excited about. I had the original P Poly Phenom before we moved, which was a large, large resin 3D printer. And um, it was the first gen from the Phenom line, which was a MSLA printer, but it wasn't monochromatic. It was running a Chitu Systems board, and I believe it was a 4K LCD screen. And this one, uh, the Forge, which we'll take a look at the product page in a second here, but it's roughly the same form factor. It ships as a kit, which uh, I think was to basically help keep pricing down because the original one was freight shipping, which I'm sure cost them a ton. Uh, and because of that, this is actually less expensive than the original Phenom, but it has a 6K monochromatic uh, MSLA screen. It's not running a Chitu board. It's running a different board that's supposed to be more like open form factor, uh, which the sort of reasoning for that was because Chitu Systems has sort of had a monopoly on the resin 3D printing market. And it didn't really seem to be an issue until there was a scare like a year ago where they were locking you into Chitu Systems and not allowing you to use Lychee or third-party slicers. It seems like they've released an API and that's all been corrected, but um, not having one manufacturer make every resin 3D printer hardware on the market is probably a good thing. Um, it also has a heated vat, which is super cool. Um, it's definitely something that's important for engineering resins. They're much more fickle uh, in terms of their viscosity. And if you don't have a warm vat, it can be very difficult to uh, correctly or evenly cure those resins. Uh, it also has a camera, which is pretty cool. And it's going to be fun. I, um, I think the idea of having it in sort of a kit format is also nice for whoever gets it to just get a general understanding of where things are inside the machine, if there is ever any maintenance or troubleshooting versus it being a mystery if there's ever a time where you need to do something on the printer. So um, happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, Larry, CNC, Dan, Kenneth, Rod, Skydown, Wargaming, G-Funny's here, Chris, Aaron's in chat. I think I said Dan already. Uh, Lisa, Jose, uh, Grant, I hope everyone is having a great week. Um, before we dive further into this, a couple of announcements, things I'm kind of excited about or really excited about. We had talked about potentially doing a Monday stream and I'm here to announce it is, it is officially going into fruition. Uh, it won't be every Monday. We're gonna start off with basically every other Monday starting with this upcoming Monday. Uh, the downside to that is Mondays I work and so the stream will not be until 6 p.m. my time, which would be 5 p.m. Pacific Standard, so five hours later than this stream. So to EU audience, unless you're working graveyards or you're on a vampire schedule, I apologize. It's just the only slot I can really make work. And we did a little bit of a, we didn't really do a poll, but we got feedback last week and Monday seemed to be the best day to not collide with other streamers so much and kind of as like a cool way to kick off the week. So that'll start next Monday. Um, I believe we're going to be setting up a CO2 laser, which we'll do in here. It's going to be interesting. It won't live in here after that, but uh, I'm pretty excited. Also, next year is, nope, next month is our one year stream anniversary. And originally, I hadn't really planned on doing anything. Like, I was just going to do a regular stream, and that has changed. Uh, so, it's going to be sort of similar to our 1,000 subscriber giveaway palooza if you will um i don't have all of the prizes and i think i'll keep some of them sort of hidden uh for now um I, it won't be cr quite as crazy like like the fabrico had sponsored a v0.1 kit last time and it's not going to be quite that massive but there's gonna be quite a few prizes it turned it went from just like we'll do a regular stream to like i'm counting probably 20-ish or so prize giveaways. So it'll be like a print and chill stream, probably similar format to last time, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. And the more I started thinking about it, one year of consistent streaming is something that I think we should celebrate. And the channel's grown a lot, the community and all of you have been absolutely awesome. And so if 
manufacturers or vendors are willing to provide some form of giveaways for the viewers, then I think that that's super cool. So uh, I don't have a date yet. The main concerns I have is, um, oh, sorry, Dan. Um, the main things we will see on the hot makes. Yeah, I will be on hot makes as well. So the, that's interesting because hot makes is on Monday. So that will be, we'll have to figure that out. Um, the main things I have to figure out is the the anniversary stream will be on a Wednesday, so that way as many people can be here as possible. I won't do it on the Monday later stream. Uh, it needs to not be the same week as Earth because a lot of people will be traveling. So I'll figure it out in probably the next one to two weeks uh, and try to give everyone at least a two week heads up if they want to try to be there. So uh, that's what's going on. I'm uh, looking forward to it. I asked Erin if she wants to be uh, my my assistant again and she said maybe so i am uh keeping my fingers crossed that we can get her because it, it was much nicer having another person to help me out with everything because it was just sort of a lot to orchestrate and it was just a lot of fun having her involved so that's what's going on there um okay so let me pop out chat really quick here let's take a look at the product page for this um Full disclosure, Pia Pauly did send this to us to test out and play around with. I I always say that in my like review videos on the main channel. I think there's been a couple times on the streaming channel where I've forgotten. I do my best, but I want to make sure that that's clear. They did send it to us to test out. Uh, so heading over to, let me see their website. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, so. Here's the forge. Um, so the original Phenom, which again was same form factor and not monochrome LCD screen was $2,000. Um, right now, I don't know if it's one of those things where like this is regular price, but the website has it seeming like it's a sale or if this is a limited time thing, but um, this is substantially less than what the Phenom cost. And this printer has a lot more, a lot more going on with it. Um, as I mentioned, it's using this voxel dance core board instead of the chitu systems um 6k monochrome lcd screen heated vat which again is super cool you definitely probably well you won't need it for everything and it also depends on are you printing inside or outside this will be living in the garage and we have uh definitely different weather here than in southern california so that will be very handy um the uh, resolution's 50 microns, print volume is 288 by 163 by 350, so definitely a pretty big... Oh, Cherry Coke is in the back of the fridge. Oh, yay! I opened the fridge and didn't see it and got sad and made coffee. Um, uh, I might hold off on the uh, Coke for later then. I, uh, I feel like I need more caffeine after this coffee and it'll be a really weird stream. Um, I am observant, Lisa. <laughs> but Aaron is always the, like... Uh, hey, have you seen my keys? Hey, have you seen my wallet? And she can sort of like put her fingers to her head and be like, mm, yes, it's in your pant pocket under the bed. <laughs> we have a dedicated place for it that I'm getting better at using. But um, yeah, so the physical weight of the machine is 30 kilograms. Uh, so it is not a light machine. We will be uh, team lifting it once it's assembled and the shipping weight is even heavier. Uh, comes with a spare FEP and because it's an MSLA panel, it says 1200 average lifespan. Um, from my experience with the original Phenom, the, it, it's really, um, dependent on you, how you print. If you're always printing in the center, you'll get less lifespan. If you sort of don't always print full size and you space out things to the outer side of the panel, you can stretch this out to even further than that. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, we are doing our giveaway today as well. Um, so that will be going on with the Pia, po nope, not Pia Poly, the Polymaker, uh, filament later on. Uh, for the giveaway as well, for the 1,000, uh, nope, <laughs> I gotta slow down for a second. <laughs> for the one year anniversary stream, Polymaker, uh, is doing 10 spools of material. So that is awesome. If you have not gotten a chance to win a spool of Polymaker filament, uh, you definitely will have a better chance. I'm assuming there will very likely be more viewers for the stream because I will kind of be promoting it a bit, but... Uh, yeah, it's super cool of Polymaker to, to do that. Uh, what else? What else? I actually think this has wireless printing as well, if I'm not mistaken, which is kind of neat, especially since there is a camera as well. Anyways, I think we just get into the build. Um, 
it's in sort of like a slides presentation format. So I'm going to be just going through it. Oh, I forgot my bubble level. Um, I don't know if we'll need it right away. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so quick start guide it comes with two boxes. Pick a good location. This this workbench should be able to support it. Um, keep in mind the printer is large and heavy. Also consider you'll need a washing and curing station. Awesome. Okay, remove packaging. So I think we'll start with just taking this thing apart. I did my, or taking the boxes apart. I did my best to sort of, um, I did my best to sort of place things where I can put boxes on the ground. So we'll do our best. The room is definitely not uh, built for things quite this large. Hey, what's going on, James? Hey, Zen. Um, I don't know. So the boxes are labeled Forge B and Forge A. So we'll start with opening Forge A. Uh, I'm gonna lift with my knees. <sighs> I, did, I, I was doing like quite literally stretches for the countdown, like here to prep my back and everything. And um, again, once this thing's built, I will, I will be team lifting it because it's just not, not fun. I had a box cutter and disappeared. I think I've got an exacto knife somewhere. Oh, somewhere over here. All right. Yeah, it comes as a kit, which I kind of like because, well, two things. One, uh, I think that's part of the reason why this printer is at least right now on sale. $700 less than their previous version, although it's the same size and has significantly better specs. So I think that they were able to sort of pass on the shipping savings from doing two boxes like this instead of uh, a large freight shipment. Um, and two, I think for the sake of just if there's ever a time you need to troubleshoot or replace a component, um, having a general idea of sort of how things are put together isn't a bad idea. Of course, like everyone will have their own opinion on it. Some people might say not interested in a uh, kit version, but I mean, we kind of build a lot of things here. <laughs> so for for the sake of what we're doing, um, I really don't mind at all and think it'll be kind of cool to see how it all goes. Ah, so it's a box in a box. Um, I think we'll just leave the outer box as is and try to get everything out of this inner box. Oops. Because if I take the outer box off, I have nowhere to place it right now. So we're going to try to like get everything out of the box and then get this box out of here. So we've got a little bit more room to breathe. We've got some pretty fun builds coming up. Um, I finished printing. Let me show you guys real quick and then I know distractions. Um, so ERCS completely completely done printing, um, which is awesome. So we can pretty much build that whenever. Uh, the Ender 3 belt conversion kit or belt conversion um, is done printing as well in ABS. And I got all the hardware and bolts in for that. Uh, the headphones, the head Amame, um, the larger ones are done and I'm working on another accent color option. So that will be a stream. And then uh, we're also gonna be building another Core XY pretty soon here. I don't wanna say too much on it yet, but these, there's not nearly as many printed parts for this one. It's a lot of machine parts, but um, the parts for that are done. So yeah, we've got, <laughs> part of the reason we're doing Monday streams is because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Yeah, exactly, self-repair. Oh, you guys can't see anything now. <laughs> uh, let's see what happens if we go side profile. Nope, you also can't see anything right now. Oh man, I don't think I can cut through this with the exacto. <laughs> Not something I had sort of considered. All right, I'll try to hold this side down and we'll go with the left side for now. So uh, we've got, thank you for purchasing the Phenom Forge. You'll begin the setup process, quick start guide. It gives you a link for uh, basically the page we're on, which has user guide resources and the software. Um, checklist for Phenom Forge. Check for shipping damages, locate a workspace, make sure the wall outlet is grounded. Removing forge, find the this way up sign. Do the protective foams. It may be challenging to remove foams from the top of the box. Some users rotate the box and remove it from the side. Ah, much smarter than what I'm doing. Uh, inventory check, locate USB drive. It contains start guide and links to set up your forge. Awesome. So maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll tilt it. I definitely don't want to tilt it just yet because of the amount of weight I'll be tilting. 
Uh, it is not a VZ bot, but that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, because I haven't exactly received tracking on it yet, it seems like everything is going to be a go with it, but I don't want to announce it and then have it not come through. But uh, not a VZ bot, although those look awesome. So pretty cool. We've got our uh, acrylic panel, which I think that this orange color is like intended to be UV resistant or to help help to keep light from getting into the vat, which because if you've got, you know, as big as this vat is, let's see if I put this right here. Well, as big as this vat is, if you've got light pouring through, uh, it's going to suck to lose your your uh, resin. Uh, this looks like, I don't know if this is acrylic or, I don't think this is acrylic. It's kind of like an ACM style panel. So we'll put all the panelings off of the side. I'm imagining that's probably gonna be the last thing we'll do. We got top panel. The panels have a, um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it right now, but there's a chamfer on one side where they match up with each other, which is kind of nice. All right, one layer of foam down. Uh, wow, this is really thick foam. <laughs> is there more? Am I doing this wrong? Nope, this is, I'm not doing things wrong. I mean, probably. Uh, let's see if I can throw this. Don't scare your monkey. That worked. Okay, so I think at this point we actually will tilt it. Um, this appears to be, oh, appears to be the base of the unit. Um, okay, I think that's everything in the box actually. So let me, <laughs> this will be much easier once again, the boxes are cleared away. So I'm gonna place this on its side for a split second here very carefully. And we're gonna get this box out of here so we can see I can see what we're doing a little bit. It's like a uh, booby trap in here with all the cables running. It's like I have to what is it in uh, dodgeball jump jump dodge? No, what do they say? I don't know. But if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. It's kind of how it feels sometimes in there. Okay, yeah, box is empty. Let's put foam back inside. Another foam piece that I threw earlier. Whew. All right, here's my my exercise for the day. Go back to the front cam. Hey, what's up, zombie? BBs, what's going on? Uh, fluorescent lights are actually UV lights. Fluorescent lights are actually UV lights with white phosphor coating. Interesting. Uh, hey, what's up, printer prawn? Okay, so I'm gonna leave just leave this guy as is for a second with the cover. Yeah, leave the cover on for a minute. Um, let's get the second box out. Um, uh, I think I'm going to leave second box on the ground. Um, if that's cool with you, I think it's probably easier for me to lift things out of it on the ground versus having it so high up. Um, let's see. Okay. It's another box in a box situation. <laughs> Maybe I should have unboxed this before. I again, this is like we've unboxed some pretty large stuff on stream, but this definitely takes the cake. Um, this is a lot of the smaller components, so I'll just start lifting these things out. We've got frame, we've got Everything is labeled, which is nice. Uh, extrusions. This appears to be everything right there. Then we've got more panels. We've got left panel um, and right panel, maybe. We have got the other side. We'll place this guy like that. We've got FEP film. It looks like antennas. Yeah, two antennas. So there's definitely, I'm, I'm nearly positive that it has Wi-Fi printing. Um, this stuff I actually can take, uh, let me see here. Whew. Okay. Definitely, uh, definitely a lot of, a lot of moving. All right, getting this guy out of here and then it should be 
hopefully much less crazy for everybody. <laughs> for, for me and everybody. Whew, all right. Okay. I'm good, I'm good. Okay. Hey, what's up, 3DP UK? Uh, hi, what's going on? Snaz, Philip. Hello all. Catch my breath for a second here, get a little sip of water. Okay. There's a, I knew it was going to be a, um, a workout stream. Hey, what's up, KB3D? Let's go see if we can do side. I don't know if side will be better. Um, I think it might be a little bit better for showing off some of the parts that come inside of this kit. Hopefully. Okay. So what else do we have? We've got our power supply, which is really small because these generally don't take a lot of power. Um, 24 volts, 2000 milliamp uh, power supply. We have got, okay, so there must be a second power supply. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. One of them's probably for the heated vat. Okay, so Chunky. Hey, Chief Funny, thank you for the uh, gifted membership. Looks like BBs, you got a gifted, uh, gifted membership. Uh, okay, so this is a Delta electronics power supply. This one's a 24 volt, 7.5 amp. So this this was for, I would imagine this is for the actual um, printer, but maybe it's for the vat, because if the vat's heating up, that probably takes quite a bit of draw compared to one stepper. Um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll figure it out. Uh, cool, so this is our little module. Um, this is going to be for setting the temperature of the vat. Again, you don't have to run it, um, but if you're using engineering resins uh, and you are in a cooler environment, uh, not only will this make it where you can actually print with that, but it'll just make it more consistent. If you set your vat to a certain temperature, get your settings dialed in and know that every single time you've preheated it so the vat is at that temperature, then it really should help with consistency, which is pretty cool. In my uh, in my video I made on what I'd like to see in resin 3D printers, uh, this printer answered some of those things. The heated vat was one of those, one of those things I said I'd like to see, so it's pretty sweet. Hey, what's up, Eggy? Uh, let's see, do you prefer external bricks like that or built-in supplies, or uh, built-in power supplies? Uh, that's a great question. I'm a little bit indifferent. Um, the the thing I like about having them internal is that usually I don't, <laughs> there's less chance of losing them, right? Like it's there, you just plug in typically your standard plug and you're fine. The downside is if you need to replace it and it's internal, then it's more of an issue, but it's not all that often I've had to actually swap out a power supply like that. So I don't know. Um, it certainly takes up maybe a little bit more space to you, but when you're considering how large this is, I don't know if space is that big of a concern. I think I'm indifferent. I don't have much of a, um, I don't think I have much of a preference on that actually. Wow, okay, this is, um, this is the majority of the weight. I don't know if I can even pull this guy out. Wow. <laughs> okay, so this is our uh, Z-axis. Uh, it is chunky, two beefy linear rails and it actually looks like it's a ball screw uh, not a lead screw. Uh, I'm almost positive that's a ball screw and it's all I think it's aluminum, but could it possibly be steel? I've got let me see here. I've got Let's do a magnet check Okay, I think it's aluminum I'm not sure if all steel is typically I think I think is it all steel magnetic or certain certain grades of steel? I think it's aluminum. I believe it's aluminum um, geez, yeah, we'll put this off to the side. That is, that is a weapon. <clears throat> okay, aside from that, we've got, um, looks like some gloves, some filters, our camera, um, which looks kind of cool. It'll just be neat to be able to check on it, especially because it's such a big printer from, uh, you know, from inside. I'm not going to have it inside. We've got a bag of hardware, it looks like mostly fairly large bolts, couple uh, hinges for the enclosure. 
So we'll see how that goes. We've got a USB-C cable. We've got a um, flash drive, Allen key, couple Allen keys, and then our plastic spatch. And then we've got our, cheese, our build plate, <laughs> which is very large. Um, I actually have a flex plate system coming for this from Wham Bam with their new extra strong magnet. So uh, I definitely recommend, I, I like flex plate systems for resin printers in general, uh, but I certainly like it for large, uh, large resin printers. And then we've got our monster vat, which can you see the heating elements? No. Cannot see the heating elements, so it must be, oh, cool. But there is a, interesting, there's a USB port right there. Um, it's aluminum, definitely aluminum, and very chunky, which uh, is probably because, again, they have a heating element lined within the inside of it, but this is a really nice looking vat. Um, it does look like the replacement will be the same on just about any other resin printer, where there's a gazillion screws on the bottom that you take off, which removes this this lip and then there's more screws on the other side and that's how you replace the FEP. I would love for somebody to invent a quick swap solution because I will say that uh, swapping FEP is probably one of my biggest, I don't wanna say complaints, but maybe not. It's like the biggest chore in my opinion of resin printing um, is if you damage the FEP or when it's time to replace it, it's just not a fun, not a fun experience. Is it spam calling me again? Yep, someone someone definitely put my number on a list. I've been getting nonstop spam calls. Ah, let's see. Hey, what's up, Lap? Uh, are we gonna see it print tonight? I hope so. Uh, I really hope so. Um, uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, it's definitely gonna be the goal, but it, it just depends on how long this takes together. Some stainless is not magnetic. Okay. I was gonna say, I thought there was some forms of steel not, but I think it's aluminum. I think pretty much all the metal on this is going to be aluminum. Uh, stainless, not magnetic, so people, what's up, Tony? Uh, careful using flex plates on huge build plate like that, the pull force. Um, the pull force might actually pull the plate off the magnet. The um, Wham Bam came out with a new uh, magnet system that's, they're like, XTR or extreme uh, and it's supposed to solve that issue. So that's that's what I'm going with on this. But yeah, I agree. Uh, the pull force can be pretty crazy. Spare vat is definitely uh, so for some of the smaller resin printers that have plastic vats, you can get replacements for pretty inexpensive, but it's just not viable on something like this. Uh, let's see, G20, can we please get some hat options in the merch store? Yes, I'm gonna, speaking of hats, I'm gonna put mine on really quick. Um, so the merch store has been awesome. You guys are incredible. I, I think most that ordered on the initial stream, so two weeks ago today have received theirs. I've seen some pictures of uh, like people wearing the merch or just, you know, of them receiving it. And it looks incredible. I'm so, so happy and excited. It seems feedback's been great. So the game plan with merch was to sort of like start with what we had and then go from there. Um, the the uh, stream elements has hats as well and they've added an like embroidery option. The embroidery option is much more limited than uh, like pr the printing that they do for shirts, but yes, uh, hats slash beanies will be coming. I just need to figure out the logo situation, um, whether I'm going to commission something or whether I'm going to sort of try to create something myself, it just has to be a much more simplified design versus like the spool bus. So there will be more. Um, I absolutely want like a um, Modbot themed snapback type thing as well. So it will be coming. I just don't know when and want to make sure that, uh, want to make sure that I uh, am happy with it. I, I took my time with the spool bus one. It was like a three month pro prog uh, like from beginning to end. And so I just, we will expand, but I just, I wanna make sure I'm very happy with it before I even think of recommending it or, or putting it on the store for everyone. So <laughs> dad hat, please. <laughs> yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, okay, so going back to here, we've got to remove the tapes, open the carton. Hey, speaking of merch, uh, JW bought a ModBot spool bus t-shirt. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you like the shirt. I, uh, my, my, it's funny, my parents, um, 
reached out saying that they wanted to get a shirt as well. And I said, well, you know, I can get like a shirt for myself. And if I get it for myself, they'll let you get it at cost. But both my mom and dad were like, nope, nope. We want to support you and we want to, we want to pay like the regular price. And I was like, I was like, I really appreciate you guys. So uh, my mom and dad ordered a shirt and they didn't tell me that they actually ordered it, but they're coming to visit in a few weeks. Something tells me they're going to show up at the airport wearing Modbot merch, which is amazing. Uh, so not a fan of snapbacks. Okay. We can, I think they have both options. I like snapbacks because, uh, I've got a big head and, um, as my hair gets longer, I find myself getting headaches at a specific size, but if there's both options, I will definitely, um, I will definitely make sure I do both options for you guys. Uh, I saw zombie wearing one in the stream, so I wanted one too. Gladys. Hey, thank you, Skydown. I, I appreciate it, man. I hope you like it. What color did you go with? It doesn't tell me the colors. And I, uh, I know zombie got the green, which looks amazing. The green looks sick. Okay, remove the tape, open the carton with two layers. Oh, it does say there's two layers, so I should have known. Uh, take out the machine brackets and casing that needs to be assembled. Awesome. What's next? Tools you'll need. I think we'll be good on that. Find a place, level, yada, yada. Remove, wait. Oh, I, I went backwards. Um, box A content. Main body, top panel, back panel, front door panel, welcome note, cool. Uh, then this one has the remaining parts. Screws. I guess we should do, uh, I'm less concerned about big parts and it's probably not a bad idea to make sure we have all of these little baggies in here. So let's do a quick run through from that so we don't get too far into the build and I'm freaking out trying to figure out where everything is. So let's see, M3 by 12s, uh, check. M4 by 10s, check. Uh, M4 16s, check. Everything's nicely uh, individually packaged and labeled with big stickers, which is nice. Uh, M4 25, check. M5 14, where are you? M514? Yeah. M520s, yes. M612s, yes. M620s, yes. Did I say M525s? I did not, but I have them. Okay. Uh, hinges 2 and door handle set. I don't see door handle set. Hopefully we have that. Um, I'm less concerned about door handle set because Worst comes to worst, I just open it from top or bottom, but it looks like we've got all the hardware required here. Uh, nice was waiting for someone to talk about this printer. Hey, what's up, Bendix? Oh, nice, green, yeah. I, w I don't know what colors my parents got. Um, I'm curious to see, but yeah, I I'm probably gonna get more as well. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out and it's super comfortable. Um, so I might get a few different colors as well. What's up, Mr. Jada? Okay, so we've got hardware. Toolkit accessories, that's fine. I'm not too worried about that. Open the carton equipment, take out the frame and door panels, take out the massive Z. Important, before, um, before the official installation is recommended to lay a layer of foam on the screen to protect it. Oh, interesting. Um, I think there's, there's already some sort of cover on it, but that's good to know. Before the official installation, it's recommended to lay a layer of foam cotton on the screen to protect it to prevent screws or other tools from fall. Ah, that makes sense. When you're up building high and you have a bombs away situation, which uh, I <laughs> certainly always do. Um, oh, nice, uh, Lisa, blue. That's what Aaron got as well. The blue is a slightly different material than the black. Like uh, the black shirt's definitely comfortable, but the, I think Heather is the, um, like how you, I think that's how you describe that sort of color. Uh, it, it seems to be a little bit softer. Okay, so if I don't remember, someone remind me to put foam on the screen so we don't damage it before we start. Uh, install the Z-axis. Okay, so let's let's move things. I, build plate's gonna be one of the last things to go on. Uh, vat is typically also one of the last things to go on. Where can we put the vat that it won't get damaged? We'll put you on the ground right here. That looks like a safe spot. Um, hardware, camera is also probably not right now. We'll put you here, we'll put you here. Um, and let's get things, let's get things unwrapped. Um, I'm not going to be placing this back on that because <laughs> I don't want to damage the screen. Hopefully I didn't. I don't think I did. I had it off the side. All right, we'll go back full screen here. Uh, looking at getting a laser burner, which one do you recommend for beginner? Um, what's your goal? Like, is it just, you want to have some fun or is there a certain project or projects you have in mind? 
Because I, like, I... So, I have a K40, but it's at my parents' house. It couldn't make the move. And when we moved to our final place, I just didn't have a space for it. Um, and then I have a bunch of diode lasers, uh, primarily from working at Lightburn and doing video content. Um, I have a Galvo fiber laser, which is definitely on the pricier side. And then I have a CO2 laser coming on Monday, which is uh, like a YouTube thing, which we will be setting up. Uh, but I have, I have a fair, like, not, I say I have a okay amount of experience with each, but a better understanding uh, of them, depending on what you're wanting to do. Uh, the, the laser pecker, is that the one that's like Galvo diode? The, the only concern I have with that is I don't think it's going to be Lightburn compatible if that's something that's important to you. Of course I have bias because I, I can't work at Lightburn, but it's like most lasers are going to be compatible with Lightburn, which is nice because if you decide later on to upgrade, you don't have to learn like different proprietary software suites, sort of similar to 3D printing and like using Cura versus having to use a proprietary piece of software. Uh, graphics and cutting acrylics. Okay. Um, hey, what's going on, Hunt? I got green and Jackie got the blue. Oh, nice. Uh, so graphics. Um, graphics, I'm, I'm thinking you're probably talking about image engraving. So engraving, uh, diode lasers actually do a great job of engraving, and they've gotten a lot more powerful. There's like 5 watt, 10 watt, and 20 watt variants now, which is absolutely insane. Um, the only thing they don't do a good job of engraving on is metals. So basically fiber lasers are primarily for metals, although they can do some um, uh, acrylic engraving. They don't really do any cutting. The diode lasers can now do cutting, um, but they're still primarily engraving and cutting is going to be a bit slower. And then CO2 lasers are just great at cutting like pretty much everything quickly. Um, for cutting acrylics, you'll only be able to cut like black acrylic with a diode laser. Um, you definitely won't be able to do any clear acrylics. Uh, you might be able to do some other opaque acrylics as well, while CO2 is going to be your best bet for cutting um, clear acrylics. It's really the only option. So it really depends on, um, you know, again, I mean, budget's a huge factor too, right? Because they the price can vary from, you can get an entry level, you know, like pretty okay diode laser now, for maybe 300 ish to 400 ish all the way up to a thousand depending on um how powerful you want it and then for co2 um the price is definitely higher like you have the k40 at 400 bucks but super small work area and it's kind of like the a net of the uh a net of the co2 world um there's a huge community lots of mods but you'll be putting money and time into upgrading i think I bought mine for 400 off eBay and then probably put another 600 into upgrades and it's still like not close to like the CO2 laser I have coming, which retails a little over 3000. Uh, and then fiber lasers are just, they're quite expensive. I mean, they're a lot more. So I think diode, uh, 700 is a limit. So at $700, you're looking at diode lasers, um, the, or, or the K40. So I think ultimately you have to decide K40 will have a much smaller build volume um, but it is a, a CO2 and you can get a diode laser with about a 400 by 400 millimeter work area for that price. My personal favorite probably is X tool. Um, they just, I have the D one original, the five watt, but they also have a 10 watt and 20 watt variant. And they now have a 1064, uh, diode version, which allows you to engrave metal if you ever want to upgrade. So I really like the, um, I would look at Xtool, man. It, they also are Lightburn compatible with a firmware update on them as well. So um, that's what I'd look at. Uh, true on the cutting black acrylic, only on the dial laser as I found out the hard way. Yeah, I, I've done some black acrylic cutting and it's cool that you can do that. But if you're wanting to cut like clear acrylic for enclosures or, you know, whatever other project, you just, you won't have any luck. Um, hey, what's up, Sam? resin streak lately streaker <laughs> uh resin today and last week and then no resin for a bit we will return next week's probably laser uh one day and then so this has some wobble to it but the feet are adjustable i'm not in super concerned right this second about it let's see i guess i could just lay it flat right and then go like that and the wobble's gone that's cool so the feet are sort of threaded. Um, I don't think they had that on the original phenom. It was just rubber feet. On this one, you've got 
adjustable feet. So if you've got uneven ground or, you know, whatever, you can, yeah, there's well, still a little bit of wobble, but this table has a bit of wobble, so it's not entirely a fair, yeah, much better. <clears throat> okay. So next it says, um, lift the Z-axis arm to the middle at the red triangle spot shown below by pushing it by hand. Can I push it by hand or will I need to? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I really can push it by hand. Uh, let's see if we can get you guys a closer shot of what's kind of going on over here. It's always fun playing musical chairs with the camera. I'm hoping in the next couple months, along with the TV that Dan wants me to get so I can read chat, uh, to figure out maybe a solution where I mount a camera to the ceiling. Um, I got rid of, well, it's still here, but I got rid of the overhead webcam. The quality just wasn't good. We weren't really using it. So if I can have a camera up here that I can just sort of adjust with my hand to give us a top down view, it would be, it would be so nice for, for the sake of the stream. So it looks like it wants us to have this roughly on the fourth bolt. So one, two, three, four, and we'll just try not to damage anything and roughly place this guy right there. <clears throat> Oh, that's right, Luke. You did say you got the 20 watt. Um, yeah, it's absolutely insane. So the the way they work for anyone interested, I know we're going off on tangents and not building. It's sort of my my MO is that uh, they can't actually make a 20 watt laser. At least that's my understanding, diode laser. And so they're just combining beams. So inside of the 20 watt X tool, it has a four or five watt diodes that are all being bounced off of a mirror and then all going into one compact beam. So you're getting the combined strength of the four or five watt lasers, which is crazy. And I have, um, no, I think I have the 10 watt version here. Not, I definitely don't have a 20, uh, but I have a few five watt or four watt diode lasers and then the 10 watt X tool. And if you're looking to cut or really even engrave, but certainly cut, it, it makes a big difference in terms of uh, speed and just uh, less passes when you're trying to cut out material. TV win. I don't know. I don't know, Dan. <laughs> Maybe soon. It's almost my birthday. Maybe I'll treat myself uh, to, a, to a, a TV for the stream room for that or something. We'll see. Okay, so we have got the arm moved out of the way. Great. It says, when you remove the lower, install the Z-axis and stop sensor. When you remove the lower chamber from the box, you will see two cables like the upper right. Untangle and keep the end stop sensor cable shown on the right and put the motor cable back in the opening. Okay, that sounds easy enough. Uh, let's move this down here, focus in on that. Yeah, this thing is huge. I mean, luckily we have the space here, um, which is which is nice. Uh, let me go side cam. Let me put on our retro music. So we're 44 minutes in and I haven't, <laughs> I've unboxed. <laughs> oh man, all right. Look at this guy on YouTube. <laughs> What's up, tripods? Uh, speaking of uh, diode laser stuff or just laser stuff in general, tripods, when I was talking about the 1064 wavelength adapter for the D1 Pro or D1, uh, tripods is actually the video that I watched on it. And it is super cool to see. It, it's not a very high power at two watts, but the ability to truly engrave on um, metal is amazing. And he did titanium, copper, uh, stainless and aluminum, I think, in his video. So very cool stuff. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to carefully cut the zip tie like this. And it says, um, this guy I'm assuming we're going to leave out off the side. Um, and then we're also definitely going to be leaving the, oh man, don't, hold on. I need to just focus here. I have absolutely snipped cables in the past by not paying attention. Okay, so then the end stop is also going to stay, but it says the motor, uh, the, the stepper motor cable, we actually want to push into the cavity according to our instructions. So let's try to kind of get these out of the way. I don't want to pinch them on anything. Okay, that should be good. <clears throat> yeah, I would certainly say I have a 10 watt. You <laughs> do, man, you got to get that thing out, dude, especially with your builds. Um, uh, Steve, uh, from Steve Builds, I actually sent him a 5-watt laser after we were talking at Murph, 
And man, the things he's been doing with his five watt dial laser is incredible from like cutting ACM panels to awesome custom etches. Like he's been just doing crazy cool stuff. Uh, I just uh, got a scope one S10 and compared to my old K40. It's actually, yeah, it, um, diode lasers have definitely gotten better. I still think like if you're at, like, if your main goal is lots of cutting and especially of clear acrylics in the equation, then CO2 is the way to go. But uh, another factor to consider with diode lasers that is pretty cool is the mobility beside them. Like, yes, um, not having an enclosure on them is not ideal and certainly not gonna work for everyone's situation, but the ability to take it down, use it, and then just hang it on a hook on the wall is really attractive. I just got a 100 watt Mopa fiber. Oh my God. I have a 30 watt Mopa fiber. That's, yours is much, much beefier. <clears throat> All right, untangle. Okay, we did that. What's next? Install the Z-axis and end stop sensor. Okay, so it looks like place the Z-axis in place and align it with the screw holes. All right, that's what we're gonna do then. Oh, you know what? Someone, <laughs> this is, I'm gonna remind myself. I said that we would use foam to prevent damaging the screen because I will be kicking myself if I don't do that. So piece of foam goes down that way if we drop any screws, which it's me, so we will, uh, it won't land on the glass. I actually can't tell if we're aligned or not. Um, flashlight to the, flashlight to the rescue. Okay, that looks sort of aligned, I'm sure we'll, we're gonna loosely insert all the bolts anyway. Um, it says, fit it with six M5 by 20 cup head screws. So M5 by 20, nice. We'll just actually place them on the screen. It's now become a place to store things. Um, I have eight lasers hanging. Yeah, it's it's so nice. Um, come on, drivers. It's so nice to be able to place them in the way. I have like three dial lasers just on the rack and they take up little to no space. So it's very nice. Um, Mama Army, what about focusing the laser? Focusing the laser on the resin printer and leave the engraving for another live. Um, I will, I will do my best. Next week we are going to be doing a um, CO2 laser live stream, uh, I think probably on Monday, depending on when it shows up. So we can definitely have much more laser talk then. I agree, if I, I do get distracted a lot and I enjoy that, uh, I enjoy that actually quite a bit, but um, if we're gonna make some progress on this, I will try to, try to make some progress before we go off on another tangent. About the toxic games of this printer and the heated vat, you could probably print more viscous resins that are not that toxic, right? Yeah, so the heated vat does a couple of things. Um, like, generally speaking, when printing in cold environments is very, very difficult, if not impossible, with a resin printer. Um, especially, it, it slightly depends on the actual resin that you're using. Uh, for example, the, is there an extra bolt? It looks like there is. For example, uh, engineering resins, so like Sariatec, um Blue, which is their tough resin, and gosh, their Sculpt, um, and even the flexible resin is just a thicker resin in general. Um, and so you can print it without a heater, but it just becomes tougher. And then if you, if you add uh, a cool environment to it. Like, you know, again, for example, a lot of people are probably having the resin printers not inside, or maybe they are, I don't really know. Um, it becomes near impossible to get consistent prints year round, especially if you're doing large prints. So the ability, I, I probably won't use the heated vat for all resins, like standard, um, we'll, we'll see, I say that now. Standard resins, like just your basic model resins, I don't think I'll be using it on. Um, but for any other resins that are sort of specialty resins, I definitely plan on using it just to get much more consistent, consistent results. I think it will, it will lower your failures by using it. 
Uh, we didn't get the motor cable. Uh, according to the instructions, it says don't, like, unless I'm tripping. Um, one second here. It didn't say anything about connecting it, and I was under the impression it was going to be a later thing. Um, untangle the end stop and sensor cable and put the motor cable back in the opening. So it looks like they just push it down. Um, let's see, so we're installing that. And it's frame, 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 panels, 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 panels. Open the back of the device and connect the motor wires. Yeah, so it's a way later thing. I, I thank you for saying something though. I, I thought I had seen that um, prior, but I <laughs> oh man. How bummed I would have been to get to the end of this and be like, ah, there's no way to access that. Yeah, so for right now we're just pushing it down. I think it's because there's not a whole lot of space other than for the stepper to get through the cutout. And so the um, they don't want you to damage it accidentally. All right. <clears throat> During the winter you'll be probably need to use it. I really can't print in the winter due to it's cold. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'll be using it in the winter. I mean. It's already dropped. I was talking a few weeks ago about how, how hot it has been. Um, and it has already dropped from like the 100 degrees it had been to like mid 70s. Uh, and so I imagine, you know, just a little bit longer here. I think these are extra screws they gave us. I imagine just a little bit longer here, it'll drop, you know, even further. And so it's something I've never dealt with before. I've always resin printed inside. So um, I'll have more info on it once the true cold season gets here. Okay, so next we're gonna be installing the limit switch, which looks like it just faces upright like this. Get these two little screws through here. I mean, compared to the FDM prints we've done, uh, I mean, FDM printer builds we've done, this is going to be, I think, and I hope they don't jinx it, a relatively simple build. Um, it's just more, you know, like the parts are heavy and that's really it. Like I, there shouldn't be anything I don't think. I also don't want to over tighten this. I want it tight so that way there's no play in the motor or in the um, in the homing, but it should be plenty good. It's not even a, it, it's a, um, oh God, what's it called? Oh, where basically as it homes, it goes through and breaks the beam that the two sides are sending. It's not a mechanical switch. Someone told me what it is, not inductive, it's, I can never remember what they're called, those kind of switches. Uh, good time to make an enclosure for this printer. <laughs> no way. I love the precision of resin, especially the new DLP offerings, but material properties are too variable for me until an SLS printer falls off a truck near my house. I'm married to FDM. Yeah, I can get that. Um, I mean, the FDM prints, you sort of know what you're getting into at this point, while a lot of the resins are sort of ABS-like or nylon-like, um, but there isn't a whole ton of, at least from what I've seen, maybe other, uh, maybe form labs would be the exception, but uh, there's not a whole lot of long-term studies or research on how they're going to last, especially in a functional application. Optical, okay, optical is what it is. Thank you, that makes sense. Yes, infrared. I, I know it's, I knew it was simple. Um, good time to make an inquiry. I need a thing fixed first. $31 add-on, you get a heated vat and chamber. Okay, so we've got that installed. Easy peasy, now I think we're doing the side. Find the left frame, fix it to the host section. Okay. Um, maybe we'll just go like this, I'll back this up a bit. And we'll go... Camera angles are always fun. It's like the trickiest part of streaming is figuring out how to make it where you guys can see what the heck's going on. Okay. Find the left frame and fix it on the host section with two M425s. Okay, so it should be labeled left. This is labeled right, this is labeled left. And there are bolts. So the only thing I need to confirm is, oh, it's pretty easy. Um, so, going to the side, uh, there is, the front side has a very specific look, like the, the rest of the sides are just open 2020 extrusions, uh, and the front side has this sort of cover to it. So, we're going to place, oh, we're going to place this right here, keep the cable on the inside. Okay, and there's a lip on this, so I'm assuming the lip's 
probably going to align with those holes. Um, and then what are we using? M4, M4 by 25s. The resin, poly uh, the resin polymers in resin aren't as good as the polymers in filaments. Uh, the bonds aren't as strong. I will say though, it has impressed me the um, sort of, can you stay for a second? No, I don't wanna risk it. Um, I will say it has really impressed me the sort of expansion in the resin catalog. Um, I mean, it was basically all model resin initially and there's definitely more options now, um, but maybe it makes more sense to just go front. Let's try this for now. Um, yeah, it's still, you know, still not on par with FDM, but I think that as time progresses, there will become more and more, um, more and more resins just sort of, I mean, when, when I got into FDM printing, all there really was was like ABS, I think Ninja Flex and PLA was sort of coming around. Um, just loosely put that. And then, you know, now we have all of these different materials and variants of these materials. So I think that as resin printing still continues to become, hopefully I can line this up, there we go. I think as resin printing still continues to become more popular and more accessible, we'll see further and further advancements and development in the actual resins themselves. But there's no denying for like pretty prints, whether it's cosplay stuff or whether it's, um, you know, just artsy prints, like it, the quality is insane. Um, I also for functional stuff have seen, there's castable resins, which is pretty cool for, um, I think some of them impersonate wax, so it's almost like lost wax casting. Uh, I also have seen people make molds and and they've casted uh, directly into the resin printed mold with like a hot rubber or a um, uh, different types of resin. So there's stuff like that that's pretty cool that you can do with it, uh, where you're not exactly using the the photopolymer resin as the you know the final product. Um, Okay, so, got that. Find the front, find the front, back one, and back two support brackets. Oh, it's literally listing off all of them. Uh, use M6, M6 by 12 half round to fix one side of the front support frame. Do not tighten the screws. Oh, interesting. So this is going cross. So this is just front. And we're using M612s, which are these guys. I'm going to do some VOG style cast. I would love to do some VOG style casting. I don't know. I, um, there are certain resins that can literally hold up a truck in the shape of a chain link around the an inch diameter. Yeah, there's definitely some crazy strong resins out there. There's a manufacturer, I can't think of what their name is. The resins are crazy expensive, but the, um, the, nope, yep. Uh, the, the actual, one second here. The capabilities of that resin's insane, but it's, it's very expensive, expensive resin. I would love to get into some casting though, uh, and mold making eventually here. It's sort of <laughs> like, Juggling all the different things we're doing, I'm still playing around a lot with CNC stuff, and then um, as we were talking about the laser stuff as well. So it's on the list, but there's no rush. <laughs> okay, so it looks like these just kind of. Okay, I'm just gonna shove the screw in and start to sort of tighten this. I know it's said to not like fully tighten it, probably because we need to, let's just let it hang like that for a second. <clears throat> I don't think you guys could even see that. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, resin is definitely getting more cost effective. The um, JO resin that we used the um, on the D2, 
I think it was like $20 for a kilogram, which it's just standard resin, but, or yeah, it's just standard resin, but um, pretty sweet. Okay, use M612 half round heads to fix one side. Do not tighten the screws. Why does it say screws plural? There's only one in there. It's probably just typo. Okay, uh, then use M612s to fix side of the back one support and back two. So back two is on top, back one is on or does it matter i can't i can't actually see um wait what that's doing the opposite of what i want i can't tell um i guess one thing i could do is just look at them and see if there's any difference so back one back two uh, holes look the exact same, exact same, exact same, yeah, we're good, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so we're gonna do sort of the same thing here, uh, and it's also gonna be with the M612s. Um, I have no idea what's gonna be the best angle to show you guys right now. Um, we can do this, I guess, although I still don't know that it's the best, but I guess if I tilt it like that, it might work. Um, and so, as far as direction goes, it looks like we want the sticker, the sticker that says back um, should actually be facing backwards to have the correct orientation. At least that's how it seems, and that's, that's what we're gonna roll with. So, I'm gonna keep them loose as well. That's not going to work. What? Okay, so that one needs to be a longer bolt. Uh, let's try the top one. Top one's a different, different opening. Oh, come on. And that's why they want you to put foam on the LCD screen. There we go. Okay, so we will get this guy threaded. Again, not tightening it fully, just sort of getting it in there. It's probably okay for right now. Okay, but yeah, we definitely need a different bolt for the bottom. It has a different, it doesn't have one of these corner brackets. It's just in the extrusion. So uh, yeah, M620 for the other one. So that makes a lot more sense. Where are you? M620. <clears throat> Somebody remind me in 26 minutes that we're gonna be starting the, uh, opening the form for the giveaway. Okay. So we will do the same with this one. Was actually tighten it all the way okay so i've got it loose as well let's not lose this one all right we've got our support beams on done with that okay uh find the right frame and fix it to the host sections with m425s okay so same thing we did um orientation looks like i've got it all correct we're gonna do oh let's make sure so this has a specific part to it. It looks like it's gonna go like this. Yeah, so I guess, make sure orientation, um, like the sticker that says right should be on the outside and this little bracket needs to be on the front inside. So we are going to align this like that. And then, hey, what's up, Steve? Thanks for renewing your membership. What's going on? <laughs> building, a, building a little resin printer today. M425. This is my exercise for the week. Where are the M425s?
Okay, here we go. Here's one. Oh, it's the same. Clearly, it's the same one as each guy here. M4, that seems right. 25, that is absolutely correct. Okay. All right, bolting frame in place. So far, assembly has been very easy. Um, I wish I got this lined up. No, this is wrong. No, it's not. <laughs> There we go. It threw me off a little bit because the left front side has this cover on it and the right does not, but I'm assuming it's because this is going to be, or this is the side that's gonna have the hinges or something like that, so. Yeah, because this is a magnet. This is where the um, the door will, will close onto. Did I tighten this one fully? Okay, so this one we're going to be tightening fully. That resin printer is so big. Wondering if I can print my missing leg with it. <laughs> John. <laughs> oh, tripods. The resin printer is so big. Wondering if I can print my missing leg with it. Well, I've got, uh, I, I got to get more resin. I only have a little bit of resin here, but I certainly, certainly be willing to try. Thank you for the donation, John. <clears throat> yeah, I could fit probably uh, some of the other resin printers we have here inside of <laughs> inside of this one, like uh, the nesting dolls. Make sure you, uh, make sure you film it when you do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank thank you for that, John. <laughs> okay, all right. So we've got the side panel on as well. Next, I'm assuming we're going to be tightening everything. So, the connection points between the right and uh, wait, the connection points between the right frame and back one support frame are fixed with M612s. Connection. Okay, so we're basically doing the exact same thing we did. So, um, the 12s. Let me make sure I've got all the bolts correctly here. Okay, so we need two M612s. Bam. I guess we'll start with, um, here. Ooh. Let's go with the side cam. All right, so starting with these ones, the M612s are for these top top bars, and we're still, I'm not gonna fully tighten anything yet. I wanna make sure I get everything kind of in place, and then as a last, um, the final thing we'll do is fully seat everything. Oh, come on, guy. Come on, guy, there we go. Okay, so it's in, again, still quite loose, that's fine. Just wanna make sure that we can get everything aligned before I start clamping. Another one bites the dust. There we go. I think I lost my leg in the eye. Can you see printed in pink resin? We can make that happen. Um, do you have trash? Trash in there, I guess? <laughs> okay, so M612s, uh, then M620 is gonna be for this one because it doesn't have the same corner bracket. It's basically going through, through the extrusion um, and it should be this guy, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll check again. It looks like it's an M5. M620. Okay, and it says then tighten the screws at each end of the front, back, and okay, so it, is, it does want us to tighten everything after this. So let's get this installed. Let's get it lined up. Okay, so that's installed. Now let's go ahead and start with the top. I, there's actually little tabs on these corner pieces, so 
you really shouldn't have to worry about aligning anything. It should just sort of align itself. Um, kind of self, self squares itself in a way. All right, and then we're gonna do the same for the back. that. Now the bottom ones. A lot of jump over the HDMI cable. Okay. We'll do one final round of tightening these things since it is the frame and we want them nice and tight. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't self-align. This definitely sticks up a little bit. Hmm. We'll figure it out. Okay. Whew. Ow. My <laughs> shoulder pop. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just want to say I love the music. Hey, thanks, Dougal. Yeah, this is the... Um, uh, this is my favorite album, I think, out of the mix. Got to pick up the Minion from daycare soon. No worries, more gaming. I mean, there's gonna be a full video on this on the main channel that'll be like a, the four of you once we've gotten some time with it. And we could potentially do another stream where we just kind of hang out and print with it as well. Um, plus we might be streaming when you get back. Uh, you're going to want a collection of dye if you're a new small resin printer. Yeah, it's something, um, I do have some translucent resin now and I haven't played around with any dyes or alcohol inks. Uh, it's something I'm definitely interested in for at least the pretty prints. I've seen some pretty amazing stuff. Okay, it says the back one support frame. Oh, okay. Um, how will I show you guys this? I'm sure this is gonna scratch. This, this tabletop's gotten so jacked up from the three months we've been here already. Um, okay, so on the back side, this cross beam actually bolts into this. That's what it's showing. So to do that, we're gonna use M425s. Pretty sure again that it's these guys. Looks like M4. Yep. So hopefully, hopefully this is aligned and I did everything correctly. Seems to be going in. Seems to be going in. Nice, that should really help to just sort of make the top a lot more solid. Stiff, it should really help you stiffen the frame, I guess is, <laughs> is what I'm going for. Okay. All right, that should be good. It's not, I mean, it's heavy, but it's not terribly, too terrible right now. All right, let's go back to desktop. <laughs> Done with that. Uh, how much resin does the bat hold? That is a great question. Um, I need answers, I don't know. Uh, details. Bat volume, oh my God. Two, <laughs> two and a half kilograms. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Um, yeah, I don't have anywhere near that in resin right now. So um, I'm gonna have to order a quite literal boatload of resin to test this thing out. Um, I do have a kilogram dedicated for it, but yeah, that's a, that is a monster. <laughs> that is a monster. It's nuts. Okay. Oh, sweet, installing panels. Uh, formal installation requires removing the protective film, locate the top panel, observe the four edges. On the side of the top panel, there are one horizontal edge and three sloped edges. Make sure the horizontal edge is facing the front. Okay, sweet. So uh, these things are, how are they labeled? That says right, that says left. Uh, uh, this says top. Okay, sweet. Yes, yeah, so these are composite panels. So we are going to, I guess we could just go back to this cam. There's no reason not to. Peel this off. That is a lot of resin. Luckily resin prices have come down, but yeah, it's definitely, uh, you could spend quite a bit if you're doing large, large resin prints. 
Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I also love that they're labeled. Um, it, the, it's such a small detail, but makes a world of difference to not have to assemble it and disassemble it because you just check the labels and you know you're good. These panels are actually really nice. Um, I wish I could show you guys these. I don't know how well it'll pick up, but it's like a, um, it's a gray, I would say it's a gray, a dark gray with almost a bit of metallic sheen to it. It's really nice looking, these panels. <laughs> yeah, it's a ton. Hope it's easy to empty out. <laughs> it would be really cool if there was a um, vat that came with a airtight, well, that wouldn't really work, right? Because there's FEP on the bottom, so light could still somehow get in. But it would be really cool if there was some kind of a vat that you could just sort of seal up so you don't have to pour resin out of it and it almost works exactly like storing it in a bottle. Okay, removing this cover is a lot nicer or a lot easier than tearing the covers off of uh, acrylic. That could be a real pain. Okay, so it's labeled top. The um, holes have pockets, so you know exactly which direction needs to go. And um, three of the sides have chamfers, one does not. It says, make sure the horizontal edge is facing front. So we want the chamfers to go in all the directions but the front. Uh, like so. Wait, yeah, no, that seems right. That makes sense because it's gonna it's gonna um, it's going to mate up with the other panels. It'll also have chamfers. And now we are using M416s. M416s. So this is looks like this is gonna be our panel panel screw of choice. Delilah. Where are you? You're not being good, I hear you. She's like, you're streaming, how do you hear me? Okay, let's see if I can get one of these started. Nope. Nope. Okay, come on guy, what am I doing wrong here? Hey, KB3D, thanks for becoming a member. I think I just saw, um, cause the, the original way, or the original, um, I guess way I'd heard of KB3D was through like group buying for custom printer builds. And I just saw, uh, Joe Mike, um, got a Mandela Rose plate from you guys. Uh, I think it said it was part of a group buy thing for the 2.4. It looked gorgeous. Hey, Kevin's here. What's going on, Kevin? Uh, the last couple pieces of hardware that I had to order, uh, the nuts and the couple of extra bolts uh, just showed up yesterday. So we are pretty much all systems go on the mod and depending on uh, whether things are good to go, I think next Wednesday, we're gonna do a Monday stream, which will probably be a laser stream. I think we have a CO2 laser. It shows it's here locally, but I don't know what's going on with the freight delivery. Um, that'll be Monday. And so if everything is good, uh, we should be able to start the, start the belt stream on next Wednesday. Okay, everything is in, we're just gonna, these, I mean, I want these tight obviously, but since, ooh, that's not. I, I goofed. <laughs> I goofed. Awesome. Um, I got so used to the front of this facing that direction that I forgot I'd rotated it. So yeah, I, um, the flat end is currently on the back. Nobody saw that in chat. Nobody. Well, I guess the camera angle, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta rotate this just a 180. It's pretty easy to tell because the front little panel, uh, it just doesn't meet up nicely when you have it the wrong way. So let's see if I can just hopefully loosen these and do a quick spin. Okay. Maybe. Nope. Okay. Well, can we do this without dropping screws? That is the question. 
Ooh, ooh, that went way easier than it should have. Uh, uh. Okay. Yeah, that looks much better. I was like, why are we, why are we bending this guy? All right, round two. <clears throat> uh, awesome, I'll be ready then too. Okay, sweet. Uh, from our angle. <laughs> Your printer looks right. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's funny. No, that was on me. I, I mean, of course it was on me. I'm the one building it. I, uh, I guess I had just forgotten I had spun it around when we were looking at these two bolts on the side. <clears throat> All right, it's going to be, I'm going to try to power through the panel portion because this is, this is going to take a little bit. I think this is like kind of the meat of it. After this, I'm pretty sure we're going to be plugging in wires and I'm excited to just see like if how the UI looks since it's not the Chitu board, um, you know, if it's different, if it's not. And then also uh, you can use, I believe just about any slicer with this, um, but the company that makes the board does also have a slicer and I've never looked at it. So I'm sort of curious to see um, how it looks and what the workflow is like. Ramping on me. Uh, a group eyes are pretty special for sure. Thanks. Oh, cool. I, sorry, I almost missed it. Um, I rarely empty out my vat in between prints either, unless I notice something fail. Yeah, I definitely don't empty out vats uh, between prints. I'll, if I know I'm gonna be printing that week, I'll leave the resin in the vat typically. Again, unless there's a fail. Uh, Chicago traffic is the worst. Sorry, tripods, I hope you get home soon. Uh, Eggy, well, it's time for you to go to bed, tired and in pain. Oh, sorry to hear that. Um, have a good day, night, and have fun streaming. See you all next week. Sweet, I will definitely post some photos of this beast when it's built. Need to commission a 3D spool bus print on this. That would be awesome if, uh, if somebody wanted to do a 3D model of the spool bus. Hey, what's up, Daniel? Okay, so. We are done with the top panel and I'm assuming it's on to the next panel. Yes, locate left panel and observe the four sides of the, okay, let's just grab left panel, peel, uh, left panel, left panel, this, this guy. Seven minutes and we'll open up the giveaway, uh, the form for the giveaway. Come on. Jeez, okay. There we go. Hardest part is just kind of getting it started. Once you get it. Healing. Okay, look at the side panel, observe the four sides of the inner face of the panel. And there, there are two horizontal edges and two sloped edges. Make sure that the longer horizontal edge is facing forward and the shorter horizontal edge is facing down. Align the left panel with the screw holes and fix it with 10 and 4 16. All right, this should be easy enough. That makes sense, because down is gonna be flat aluminum. So, uh, on this one, maybe we go from this side. All right, so confirming, we want the pocketed sides facing outward, and then we want flat side facing forward and downward. What am I doing? Like this? Yeah, perfect. Okay, and then bolts are right here. 
There's a lot of screws. I almost wonder if this is a good, a good time to bust out the old, uh, let's see if the wow stick has got juice. These screws, at least for the most part, don't have, because we're not threading into plastic, there's not a whole lot of tension on them. And I think that we might be able to use the wow stick. Um, Where is this guy? You look right. Okay, let's see if that'll work. Try to save my wrist a little bit here. Nope, of course you're not right. Slightly bigger is what we need. Where are you? I don't know, maybe I'm missing either blind or missing some. Oh, this guy, this, you look right. Yes, okay, let's try it. Uh, I know, the LTT screwdriver looks so freaking cool. I had guys starting away a lot of work for the moment, 25 time to quite busy almost, jeez, man. No worries, nice. Um, thanks for stopping by at all. <laughs> Sounds like you got a busy schedule. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we're gonna use this and then I'll just go around and quickly tighten the ending. Nope. <laughs> oh, much wow wow stick. All right, well, we'll do what we can with it. Ugh, I might've spoke too soon. It seemed like these were threading in pretty easy, but Okay, some of them are. Uh, Tripod says, who is going to Earth? I am not going to Earth. I really wanted to go to Earth. Um, but I've got some stuff going on here. Um, I also have family. It's my 30th birthday in two weeks. Um, and I knew my parents were gonna try to come out and I didn't know when exactly they were gonna come out. Um, and I'm still not sure if it collides, I don't think it collides with Earth, but I didn't wanna do any traveling um, knowing that they were coming out. I'm hoping somebody does videos, like usually either um, 3D Printing Nerd or I know Edge of Tech did uh, a video on Murph. So I'm hoping that like some of the highlights will make it to video. I know a lot of the stuff won't though, because at Murph, I, I had so many like in-depth conversations with different creators or different projects and you just can't capture all of that in, you know, a short video format. I mean, some of the conversations were like hour long and even then didn't feel like I was getting all of the details. So yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. And it, it sounds like the Death Racer, um, tournament contest is going to be insane. It was pretty small at Murph, uh, but still enough to like sort of kick it off and see what it was all about. And it was just a lot of fun, but with Polymaker sponsoring Filament and there being like actual, I think like cash prizes, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be super cool. So I really hope somebody gets, I'm sure that um, Sam Prentice will be getting plenty of footage of that since it's sort of his baby. Okay, panel is on. I have my Death Racer driving, working on the driver and broom. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, seeing these. These RRFs would be fun to visit, but like as you said, a wee bit far from Europe. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, right now, oh, I don't know what flights are looking like um, internationally, but I know flights have been crazy in terms of pricing and availability and complications with flying. Okay, I'm gonna post a link for the giveaway um, into the chat. Uh, let's see, giveaway form, giveaway form, send, link, shorten link, copy. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, the reminder, non-stick. All right, giveaway link is pasted. In 30 minutes, we will draw a winner pin message. Uh, for anyone that joined late, we are gonna be doing a one year stream anniversary. It'll be next month. Um, and it's gonna be similar to our 1000 subscriber stream in that it's going to be a hangout and giveaway style stream. Um, initially, I didn't really have plans on that. Um, you know, I, I figured we would just kind of do a normal stream and, you know, maybe <laughs> have a balloon or something like that. Uh, but it's, ah, it seems like it's sort of turning into a, uh, you know, celebration giveaway hangout stream, which is pretty cool. I mean, I was concerned initially starting doing the stream stuff that like it wouldn't, how do I word it? Like that it wouldn't, last i guess or that i wouldn't stick with it I, I have a hard time i start a lot of things and don't stick with a lot of things um the things i've been able to stick with is a video a week for a very long time now and the fact that we've stuck with a stream once a week and it's been so fun and the channel's been doing so great like i i think it is um it makes sense to have sort of a celebration stream and a couple of manufacturers that i sort of just whispered at to see if there was any interest seem interested in and sponsoring some prizes. And so um, I don't know that it'll be quite as crazy as the thousand subscriber stream. It, that was nuts. And I, I don't plan on doing like, we did a, like uh, Fabrico sponsored a V0 kit, which was awesome, but nuts. And uh, I don't think it'll be quite that crazy, but Polymaker has said that they had sponsored 10 spools and I've got a couple other, couple other prizes um, lined up. So it'll be fun. And, Trying to see if I can get Erin to help me out. She was awesome at the 1,000 subscriber stream. Made it a lot more fun for me and everyone seemed to enjoy, you know, enjoy having her involved. We will all wear our merch, awesome. I will definitely, I will definitely have my merch. Yeah, a year already. Part of it feels like, oh, it's only been a year and part of it's like, man, a year's flown by. Um, so much has happened between then and now. Okay, so I'm gonna be coming around to you guys' side. Um, let's see. And you're welcome only because I asked. I didn't know about this giveaway and I joined the stream. I was interested in the printer. Oh, yeah. So we are doing a giveaway. Um, uh, we do a weekly, uh, a weekly spool giveaway thanks to Polymaker. They sponsor uh, with international shipping and it's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. Let's see. Fix the facts channel. Observe the four sides the interface. There are one. So I'm assuming this should be on the outside. Yeah, it has to be, the pocketed holes. Okay, so we're rinsing and repeating what we've been doing. Grabbing you, grabbing you, grabbing you, and coming around to you guys. Ooh. Hi, everybody. I won't be able to see chat for a little bit here, and I apologize. Okay, so let's see if we can just line this up. I will say, like, Although the wow stick isn't doing 100% of the job, it's certainly better than nothing. Here you go, wow stick. All right. Nope, that's all we're doing? Okay, you can do it. Okay, this one we're not doing anything with, are we? That's fine. Seems like some of the, some of the threaded holes are a little bit smoother than others. Oop. The color is really nice in this. I know I said it before. Um, the original Phenom didn't have side panels. It was all like, oh, did I goof? No, I didn't. Why are you not? Okay, there we go. Um, the original Phenom didn't have panels. It was like sort of one, one thing. Um, and it was sort of a textured black color, which was quite nice too. But I, I actually thought that this was going to be black panels, but this is really, really nice. 
It would look nice on a... <laughs> could also look nice on like a Voron build or something like that. Yep, oh, one screw went underneath. All right, I think one more screw on this side. We're getting there. Definitely the majority of the build is all Z panels. Um, let's see. All right, another panel down. I wonder what this guy's for. There's a little bumper. There's not one on the other side. I'm assuming it serves a purpose, um, but I don't know what that purpose is. <sighs> hey, thanks for renewing your base mode. Uh, I just realized I never used my free super chat. Thank you, nice. <clears throat> uh, sounds great. I will plan to wear pants for that. <laughs> Thank you, Zen. This is a no judgment zone, though. Um, so if you decide not to wear pants, it's it's fine, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have not, be sure to smash the like button. I really appreciate it. It supports the stream, and it only takes a split second. Okay. So moving on. I'm sure there is more. Next panel up. Oops. Yeah, find, wait, no, we did that, right? Left, yeah, we did that. Right. Okay, find the door, or the front panel on the door frame, place the door frame. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm gonna scoot this guy. Scoot you there. Um, grabbing, it's a really thick piece of acrylic, which is quite nice. Let's go to, we can get kind of a focus okay so let us let us drop that piece nope nope <laughs> this is what i was yeah this is uh the usual Usual acrylic tearing fun. All right, let's see if we can get it to tear. There's one beautiful piece. I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> Not totally convinced in my acrylic tearing abilities. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 we got a hole. All right. This side is falling behind. This is like, I feel like an aggressive ASMR. Instead of slow and steady, it's like, get off. Well, it did okay until the very end, then I kind of screwed it up a little bit. Okay, I'm wondering if we need to take it off both sides or if I can leave one side on right now to sort of protect it. Hey, what's up, Maker? Uh, if you need extra room for the printers, you can always give them to me. I will pay for shipping and custom. <laughs> I feel like shipping and custom on this printer probably will cost as much as it actually costs. 
unless they tear it down. Okay. It says behind the front door panel and the new door frame, place the door frame on the back and align. Nope, we need to tear it off both sides right away because we're going to have bolts going through it. Hopefully there's not anything. Maybe I put foam down. Let's do that. I want to, I mean, I'm sure I'll scratch the acrylic eventually, but if we can avoid it for a little bit, let's, let's do that. At least the um, ACM panels are much easier to remove. Like it's a plastic, so you kind of have to put a little bit more force into it, but it doesn't tear like this paperback stuff. Okay. I actually think it was easier for me to do it like this. Maybe not. So pretty. <laughs> it's so nice looking. Oh, we hit the hole and it threw us, it screwed us up. Coming back around. All right, we did our best. Yeah, this, this acrylic looks really nice. Okay, we did it, yay. I drive the 400 miles to get it. <laughs> ah. In green, you tech peel. Okay, so find the front door panel and the door frame, place the door frame on the back of the front panel. Um, is there a, how, is there a back? I don't see, it's, it's gonna be the exact same, so, right? It looks the exact same, holes look mirrored. Um, Okay, and it says, take the thing that we dropped, and uh, let's see, note the right angle of the door frame is parallel to the edge of the front door panel. Okay. Uh, align the hinges with the screw holes on the front of, okay, so looks like this guy just sits on top like that, and Hinges also are part of the equation right now. And it looks like the hinges... <clears throat> oh, hinges have their own little baggies. Wait, no, I think I'm doing something wrong here. I have to be doing something wrong, so it doesn't make any sense. Um... Oh wait, no, I'm not doing something wrong. All right, let's look at this for a second here. This looks right, right? So the lip is facing towards the outward, uh, outside, which seems correct. Align the hinges with the screw holes on the front of the door panel. Okay, so we want them on the underside, basically. And the direction looks like... Something tells me I'm gonna insert these wrong. Why do I feel that I'm gonna do that? Okay, I think this is right. Yes, it has to be, it has to, okay, okay. No, we're good, we're good. I just need to think about it for a little bit. Um, okay, so we will just shove this guy down there and then we're doing what? M514s, M514s, M514s. <clears throat> All right, going back to side cam. Let's find the right driver for this. You are the chosen one. Let's place these right here. Okay, it's just a little bit interesting. So I think it might be easier to put the bolt through here then find the hole. Okay. I'm not really worried about aligning anything right now. I just I also don't want to scratch the acrylic. Oh shit. 
Okay, so I think the plan is get that one threaded in just with one, um, one screw, then we'll come around to this side, get the other one aligned, and then we'll continue. So this needs to go like this. Okay. I think we're doing it right. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it seems like we're doing it right. Ah. Same thing, we're going to lift this up, align this with the hole, and shit, I think I dropped some stuff. Why are you not, there we go. Okay. Okay, now that we have those two, I should be able to flip this entire thing over. Yeah, we definitely dropped both screws, which is awesome. Um, okay, flip this around like this. It should be easier to just sort of line these up and then we can focus on it. All right, we've got one screw. Where did the second bolt bounce? Did it not bounce? No, it did. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Luckily, these are large enough that the carpet won't eat them. Uh, next for me is a 400 millimeter V-Core 3.1 fully enclosed with X-axis. Oh my God. <laughs> that sounds aggressive, but awesome. Um, if you're enclosing it, then I'm assuming, are you gonna print the parts in ABS sign and not go with the um, standard P2G? I wish I had advice. Uh, good luck. <laughs> if I had built it, maybe I'd have like, you know, certain pointers about the build, but I don't have a whole lot of, I don't have a whole lot of input to give on that. Okay, so, these slots allow it to slide up and down. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to fully seat them yet. Align the hinges and the, cool. ABS for sure, nice. Uh, some good experience with the Manta MAP. So I have a video coming out on the CB1, uh, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, because there was some issues with it. Uh, my first video, there was a lot of interest in it, but there was, let me see, I can show my face, I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. There was a lot of interest in it, and the primary issue was with the CB1 and wireless connectivity. So through lots of trial and error, me running into issues with the one that I ordered off of AliExpress, I've basically, spent time in the Discord, spent time in the GitHub, screwed around with the different kernel versions, and talked to Victory Tech directly. And so in that video, it'll go over basically what you should be doing. And if you have issues, uh, Victory Tech's actually swapping out CB1s to anyone that's on the latest kernel version that's having Wi-Fi connectivity errors, you just have to send them a video. So I'll cover all that in the video and how to install the OS, but it's pretty straightforward. And hopefully they've already corrected it. Um, I think they have, it seemed like it was sort of an early batch. So that's what's, uh, what's just going on. Okay, if you do not receive the door frame. Oh, interesting. I'm assuming that, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we did panels. Uh, find the front door panel. Okay, door frame. So we do have the door frame. We're not worried about that. Um, use the door handle to align the screw holes on the front. Did we get the door handle? We did. Okay, use the door handle to align the screw holes on the front. Uh, So direction wise, I would imagine the door panel needs to be, yeah, same orientation. I'm waiting for my uh, M8P and CB1. Uh, where did you order from? I think I just saw that they're actually on Amazon now. Um, I ordered from AliExpress, so it took, uh, gosh, I don't know how long it took, maybe two weeks. Okay, so we are using, I think it'll be easier to flip this around this. I still haven't tightened the uh, hinge yet, or the hinges, because I want to make sure everything aligns. It's slotted instead of uh, holes, like, so I'm assuming that the, the point that they're going to mate with on here might take a little bit of adjustment. Okay, so the way we're doing this is it looks like 
plate on the back. This guy's threaded, uh, doesn't matter direction. And then we're gonna take two of these screws. Uh, nine more minutes, and then we are going to be drawing the Polymaker giveaway uh, spool. So if you have not entered, the link to that is pinned in the uh, in the chat. Straight from Bigtree Tech, okay. Uh, I've been testing the M8P. Yeah, so the uh, the M8P and M4P are fine, and using it with the CM4 is fine. It's the CB1 that had some issues. Um, and I mean, it's a fairly ambitious, in my opinion, uh, thing that they were doing by making it seem form factor and all that. And not to sort of, not to discredit the fact that probably some more testing should have been done and they maybe should have held back a little bit on it. Uh, but it seems like Ethernet's been fine with all of them. It's just for people over a network. Some of them had issues and they fixed some of it with a firmware update. Um, and the ones that weren't fixed with a firmware update, they've actually made some physical changes to they set a couple pins so that basically uh, contribute to the connection or signal. And so it, it seems like they're doing the right thing by basically swapping out anyone that's you know able to show that they're having the issues still after their update and all that, which is nice. Picture check is great, but always problems with reliability in first batches, uh, typical of Chinese company. Yeah, they, they um, Compared to a lot of other manufacturers, I feel like they've done a pretty good job of, of sticking by their product. Okay, install a door frame panel to the machine. Uh, align the four, or, or align the front door hinges with the screws and fix it with four. And, uh, close this front door for testing. You can loosen the magnet retaining screw to adjust. Okay, so M525s. What is this? Yeah. Okay, so front. Um, Let's do a thing. I'm gonna loosen. Alright. Let's go front cam. It looks pretty, man. It looks really nice. Okay. I'm going to loosen the hinges a little bit though. Um, and then I will get everything aligned and then I will tighten the hinges. So let me just turn these. One screw, turn each. Nope, that would, that would only work if you use the right size driver. Okay. Okay, so this should now be able to pivot, hopefully a little bit. Yeah. Which I'm sure is gonna scratch the acrylic, so let's not do that more than we have to. And then, yeah, it just bolts the outside. Whew. All right. Come on, guy. Okay. That seems at least good enough for right this second. I'm gonna take this foam out at this point. <clears throat> at least for, I'll put it on top so this can close. <clears throat> Yeah, they, I like the way this machine looks. Um, I mean, I know it's just a box, <laughs> but the the panels look really nice, and the orange acrylic cover also looks pretty sweet. So I think on these hinges, should probably be tightening them in sort of a star pattern now. Let me make sure 
Whoa. Whoa. That is a serious magnet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everything seems good. So let's slowly tighten you to bring that forward. I think this is a better way to do it. Then the instructions kind of just make it seem like you should tighten the hinge the whole way. Um, but I think that putting it on and then aligning it seems like a good option. Although it seems like it goes down a hair. Um, uh, could just be the way the panel looks. Yeah, I think we're fine. Well, it seems like it'd be easy enough to adjust later if needed. Okay. Yeah, it closes and opens easily. Very strong magnet. Uh, there is a bit of a gap. It's a bit of a gap on the acrylic, um, which is interesting. I wonder if, I think I'll play around with the hinges a little bit later and see if maybe, oh. I doubt that's what's causing it, but. There's a piece of tape right here that's blocking it. And the sticker, I suppose. Yeah, it seems like it bows a little bit. On top and bottom, there's maybe four millimeter gap up top. I'll play around with it a little bit later on. For now, it's it's fine, I mean, structurally. I just, I would like to get it flush if possible. Woo! <clears throat> Yeah, this thing is a monster ransom. Uh, now question is, where are you gonna get a cleaning and curing box that massive? I, that is a great question. Previously, I had just a massive, um, I was just using a massive tub that I bought, uh, like a plastic tote type thing and filled it with IPA. And then uh, Pia Poli does sell, um, let's see here, I think they have Forge Prime XL Store. Huh, I thought they had a resin phenom series, resin, moai, moai accessories. Oh yeah, this guy, which is also a kit thing, um, but it's a huge curing box. I mean, you could definitely build your own setup, but if you did, like if this was for, you know, a business type thing, you might want just sort of a more turnkey solution and this, this should work. Um, volume curing size. Yeah, this will cover even bigger than what this can print, which is cool. So at least I do have a solution. Uh, all right, one more minute, and then we are going to draw for the Polymaker giveaway. If you have not entered the giveaway, uh, the form is posted in chat, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and do that here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the form in five, four, three, two, one, and then I'll give you a minute if you're filling it out still. Whew. Let me see what we've got. Let's see um, back here what we've got left. Just close the front door for testing. You can loosen the magnet, yada yada. Uh, open the back cover. So now we're gonna attach the motor, install the vat, leveling and build plate. All right, we're basically there, which is awesome. Uh, I do have the back panel, which I probably should install shortly here. But yeah, we're getting very close to printing on this. Okay, let's go to me so I can really quickly grab these. We have got 59 entries today. 60 entries today. Somebody got in right in the right in the nick of time. Okay. Let's see, wheel of names. Ma'am. Delete last week. So six less than last week. So you have a slightly better odd. Slightly better odds. Alright, here's what we've got. Let me go ahead and you're on orange. <laughs> All right, yeah, this thing is looking good. Again, I, I got to figure out what's going on with that panel, with this slight gap. It's probably just an alignment thing, I would imagine, with maybe the hinges, how I did that. Or maybe I need to adjust 
the magnet to have it pop out a little bit more. I, I don't exactly know. Um, I guess the acrylic could have a slight bend in it and maybe just I need to apply some tension to it to sort of get it to slowly bend back into place. I don't know, figure it out. <clears throat> All right, sip of coffee. <clears throat> sip of water. I, I just realized you can kind of see me in orange. <laughs> from behind here. Can I pop it out? There we go. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's do this. Uh, as always, massive thank you to Polymaker for supporting the stream, supporting the content. They allow us to do a weekly giveaway uh, and basically, you know, all the shipping and all the logistics behind it. The rules of the road are um, that a winner can choose their spool and color of any PLA, ASA, PTG, and ABS, as long as it's not like a exotic filament, uh, for example, like a carbon fiber. Um, and I will contact you by end of day via email or Discord, depending on if I know you on Discord, I'll just message you there. If I don't, then I'll typically just shoot an email with the form and you will fill out the form with what you want, where it's shipping to, and then Polymaker's little uh, uh, filament elves will, at the factory, get the spool to you. So massive thank you to Polymaker. And uh, again, if you wanna support the channel and support uh, Polymaker and let them know that we're sending some people their way. There is a link in the description where you can do so. All right, on that note, let's go ahead and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And good luck. Good luck to everybody. Three, two, one, and here we go. Thighbone. You are our winner. I, uh, with a name like, let's go uh, our confetti and our cheering. Congratulations, Thighbone. Uh, with a name like Thighbone, I know you certainly haven't won before because that is not one I would forget. So uh, congratulations. I will, uh, yeah, I'll send you off an email later tonight with what you need and they will take care of, <laughs> they will take care of everything. Me, me, I win. Are you Thighbone nonstick? I don't know. Keep it getting exotics for some reason, how funny. Yeah, I've got a pretty nice stash of some pretty um, Polymaker PLA filaments now, which is super exciting. So, awesome. Well, that is our giveaway for today. Um, I just realized that we're doing the Monday stream now too. Uh, I don't know if Mondays will have a giveaway for the bi-weekly, nope, that's not right, uh, bi-monthly, is it bi-weekly? If it's every other week, bi-weekly. Yes, that no, was right. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do a spool giveaway then. I, I'll probably message Polymaker and see what they say. Uh, if they say sure, then we can, and otherwise we'll keep the giveaway to Wednesday. Hey, there's Thighbone. Yeah, congratulations. The Galaxy Dark Blue is gorgeous. I got that in uh, based off of... Uh, based off of Hedgehog's recommendation and I haven't printed with it yet. Uh, it is very, very pretty looking though. We'll definitely do some printing. The next time we need to print PLA on stream when we're testing out a printer or something like that, we'll crack it open because I'm excited to do some printing with it. Okay, let's get back. Uh, let's get back to finishing this up because we are getting much closer. Um, once again, I'm going to turn up. Oh, let's close this to not damage it. It's already getting fingerprints all over it, which it's acrylic, so of course it is. Okay, let's install the, let's install the motor. Um, there we go, the side cam, there we go. I'm bringing you guys down so it's not such a weird angle. Not that low, you guys don't need to see down there. All right. All right, we got freaking out camera. Why are we freaking out, dude? Not a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. Also, a really aggressive angle. Okay, let's see. Can I do this? Let me just go autofocus off. Does that look okay? Can you guys see it? Yeah, that'll work. A little bit blurry. Oh, come on, dude.
All right, let's go back to auto for a second. I'd like for you guys to see. Okay, let's see if I just pop it like that and then I go. Okay, does that look better? Yeah, that looks better. Awesome. Yeah, this thing is a mon <laughs> it's a monster. Uh like it, it is it is very 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 large. I um I mean, <laughs> yeah. It is insane. Okay, open the back cover of the device and connect the motor wires to the motor. Finally, install the back cover back to the device. Huh, yeah, it seems like that could be something you could do before instead of later on having to take apart five screws, but I'm sure, again, they're just saying that. Maybe they had somebody that damaged the uh, motor cable by doing it earlier on. It's not so bad. Also, this is, well, it depends on how everything else is, but on the previous Phenom, you had to flip it on its head to access anything, which was not ideal considering how heavy it was. I'm curious to see if they figured out a better way. Oh yeah, this is so much nicer. Oh man, um, it's hard to like really, the, the board but previously was mounted like on this wall. So you had to flip the machine over to access it. While this is uh, substantially better Looks like massive, are those MOSFETs? Massive MOSFETs with really large heat sinks. Um, looks like that's our, yeah, wireless connectivity right there. Um, what else do we have down here? Let me see, all right, let me get this connected. Um, let me go on this side so it's not upside down for me. It's kind of awkward actually, this little connector. Um, I guess if you grab it from the end, it's probably okay, maybe. There we go. Okay, step motor's in. But yeah, this is so much nicer for servicing. Um, the previous one on the bottom, and just flipping the printer on its head was like, you had to have a lot of space to be able to do it. And it's also really heavy, so it's awkward. Well, this is just five bolts and you have full access to everything. So I am a big fan of the design differences they went with on this. Flip this guy. Wait. Yeah. It's not really something you have to consider, right? With a like normal, call it normal, but a, a small or standard size resin printer, the, the, you know, having to flip it on its head is really no big deal. But, you know, you start throwing 60, 70, 80, 90 pounds into the equation and it starts to become a lot less fun. Especially when you're doing things like swapping out LCD screens. I mean, this one's monochrome, so as long as you don't damage it, you, you'll get a lot of life out of it, but um, you still need to access typically the ribbon, you know, where it connects to the board when it comes time to swap it out. and so. Again, just feeding it from top to down is much, much nicer. I think we're getting close to powering it on. I, we have back panel, which is just gonna be a couple screws, screw in the antenna and then install VAT, install, or no, no, we don't need to install VAT. Install uh, build plates and basically level it or align it. Okay, I guess I don't need to over torque that. Uh, hey, nice. Hey, thanks for stopping by, man. I know you had a really long day, so I appreciate you. Appreciate you still swinging by. Have a wonderful night, and uh, see you next time. Uh, I want to draw on the Polymaker stream once, and now my Trident is made from free ASA. <laughs> nice. I need, uh, need to go. Uh, okay. So we've got that on. Now it's time to. It says. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna, so we can do that. Let's go front cam. It's just gonna be, where are you at? Oh, on the other side? No, that's power supply. Ah, it's on this side. I feel like I need to apologize to my workbench. <laughs> it's like, why me? All right, side. All right, so it's just this little guy right there and we've got, 
I think they give you a spare antenna. And I wonder if they do that because some people have been breaking them. Um, yeah, it looks like they definitely give you a spare antenna, so. Which is nice, considering it's on the side. Um, I certainly could see myself accidentally forgetting it's there and whacking it on something, so. Um, wait, does it not? Okay, don't break it already. Let's not do that. Yeah, it should pivot. I guess let's not do it from the port. Let's go like that, yeah. There you go, it's phoning home. <laughs> uh, the speed of the forge with the Nexa 3D PP405 Black is insane fast. Huh, let me copy that resin name and paste it so I've got it. So I'm gonna have to order some more resin for it. I've got like one kilogram of, or liter, I think it's kilogram, of the Elegu standard resin, but I don't have a ton of resin right now. Uh, ASA is not considered exotic according to Hedgehog. So um, it is, yeah, exactly. I mean more like uh, nylons, PVAs, carbon fiber uh, ASA or, or ABS or anything like that. But yeah, ASA is, uh, ASA is allowed. Okay, install VAT screws and Wi-Fi fittings. Let's free the screen. I feel like I shouldn't have destroyed that because that would have been would have been a really good leveling paper. Actually, you know, they, they gave you a couple other pieces of paper. Okay, uh, it says to install VAT screws, which are right here. Basically wing nuts. Loosely thread these guys in. Okay, uh, that works. What's next? Getting ready for leveling. At what point do you put the back on? They just completely forgo putting the back panel on. I guess we'll leave it off till we make sure everything's moving correctly, but we certainly want it on before we start printing. Um, identify the following stuff, connecting power. Ooh, we're powering it on. Gee, it's exciting. Okay. Um, so, yeah, which power supply do we need? Um, the, the, the power cords has two prong and three prong. Since the Phenon device uses a power adapter, they can all be used and are safe. Okay, so this looks like it's a 150 watt. Okay, so the beefier power supply is, we also haven't installed the camera. There wasn't any mention of camera yet. Um, did we see camera anywhere? End stop sensor, C-axis leveling. Huh, okay. We'll just go in order. <laughs> Sorry, I know this is a lot of flashing going on here. Okay, so let's grab you. And it seems like it's the 24 volts, 7.5 amp beefy power supply that is the, uh, is the one for the actual printer's power. Why 
Why does it say... Oh. Oh, interesting. So... Can you... Am I... No, you guys can't see this. Interesting. I gotta play around with the manual focus on this. It seems like it's kind of cool, but... Okay. All right, y'all. We are gonna turn it on and hopefully everything works. I uh, actually encourage Polymaker ASA for printer parts, more totally reliable. All right, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Kind of a soft screen. Um, it, it feels pretty nice, though. Um, I don't know what the panel type is. But yeah, it feels pretty nice. Um, system, network, calibration, service. I mean, fairly similar, I guess, to the Chitu UI, which maybe they did intentionally. Plus, I guess, what else would you really want, you know? Uh, yeah, I had to empty the two kilogram plus fat. Oh my God. Yeah, it's insane. Okay, so power's on. We did that, power on the forge. You should see the screen. Yes, we do. Test the LCD screen and the power adapter. All right, we'll do a panel test really quick here. Whole room's gonna light up purple. System, nope. Tool, panel test, 15 seconds. Well, that looks good to me. Looks like a rectangle. I don't see any dead, any dead LEDs in the LED array. So we'll turn that off. <clears throat> uh, sweet, so we're good with that. Test the end stop sensor. When the printer is turned on, the end stop sensor's red LED should light up. Yep, there is a red LED on the end stop sensor. It's the one we installed back here. I don't know if you can see it, but you can probably see the red on my finger, maybe. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, you can use a piece of paper to trigger the end stop sensor, determine if it's functional, set the plate to home, and then put a piece of paper. Oh, cool, that's a good idea. Um, let's see if this, try to home it, and then test the end stop. Uh, Wait, what? It says, set the plate to home, Z0. Manual, home. Yep, that works. Yay. Not really a huge fan of the beep, but I guess it's good to know that, like, as a, that it's working correctly. Okay, uh, so that's sweet. Check whether the Z-axis motor is running normally. Tool manual, move up and down. Okay, I mean, I, we can pretty well assume that it's moving correctly based off of what it just did a second ago, but we'll still focus on that. And then we'll go 10 millimeters up. Pretty damn quiet motion. Also, how um, the Phenom was incredibly loud. Like the original Phenom, I mean, was almost like a small aircraft taken off. So I wonder, I didn't actually pay attention when we turned the screen on. Was it crazy loud or no? Let's see. That is much quieter. That is amazing. Wow. Yeah, you definitely hear the fans kick on, but that is, that is, I mean, compared to the original one, that is dead silent. Did you lube the rails? No. <laughs> hey, babe. Uh, what time is it? It's... Um, what time is it here? Okay, so Aaron's almost off. Yeah, we're basically done. I need to put the back panel on, level the build plate, and then we are good to go, hopefully. Uh, install the build platform. Yep. So let's get this big build plate in. Whew. So I would say, I mean, build's a piece of cake on this thing. You're really, the majority of the time is just panels. Um, 
everything else is pretty, you know, pretty standard of what you would have to do with a non-kit. Okay, nice build plate, aluminum. It's got pretty standard at this point, but it didn't used to be that the top has sort of a um, curve or chamfer to it. To, Cause with, the, I mean, it has a flat portion here, so resin can build up a little bit, but uh, on a big printer like this, there's a lot of resin that can get trapped on top of this if you don't have a sloped um, sloped build plate. So, uh, install the build plate, lock the knob. Oh, loosen, that's right. Loosen, are they already loose? No, they're tight. So we need to loosen these screws. I should have probably done that prior, but that's all right. We've got these little L. There we go. Bruh. Definitely want these very loose because when it hits the LCD screen, you want it to like instantly not put pressure on it. And so if they're not very loose, you risk damaging it. Oh, you know what? There's enough gap here where I don't even have to do that. I just go like that and like that. Okay, so now that is nice and loose, which is also awesome. This style build plate, we've got a pretty good uh, amount of sort of up and down room. Uh, and so to install a flex plate system, you typically don't have to do anything special with the limit switch to make it stop sooner. Usually that's enough of a um, uh, gap to just install a flex plate system, do a quick re-level and then you're good to go. So that's kind of cool. Hey, what's up? Pushing plastics or pushing plastic singular. Well, I guess plastic and anyways, <laughs> you know what I mean? What's going on? Uh, okay, screws are loose, awesome. Set the home to zero. Interesting. It doesn't tell you, I've never seen that before. So you want it to home, press down lightly and lock all screws. So it doesn't want any paper? Or is that is that assuming that you didn't remove the paper? It doesn't look like they have any paper on theirs. What do you guys think? I've never, uh, I've never done that on a resin printer before without some form of paper down. I'm wondering if because of the size, you just don't want any gap at all because you need your parts to stick like extra uh, since there's potentially a lot more weight involved. Yeah, I have a flex plate uh, that shipped out um, shipped out, I think a couple days ago from Wham Bam. So hopefully we'll get that installed quickly. If it was here now, I would have already done it. Uh, wrapping up work. Didn't realize you were streaming. Yeah, we stream uh, same time every week, Wednesday at, or Wednesdays at noon Pacific standard time is when we start. It's usually anywhere between two to four ish hours. I would say, um, we are starting a Monday stream as well. Uh, it'll be bi-weekly, but it'll be much later. It'll be at uh, 6 p.m. my time. So 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, because there's just so many projects we're working on. We need to stream another day. I wonder if it says anything about... Uh... It's so weird to me that there's no mention. I guess we can do it without, I guess we can do it without the paper. I feel like they would have to mention the paper, right? Like why would there not be any mention of paper? Worst case scenario, it's a hair too close to the LCD screen and it might cause an issue with um, with uh, sticking. I don't, I don't foresee the paper difference damaging the LCD screen though. So we're just gonna do it. So we will set these, nope. I really 
really quiet. Um, the they there's definitely a lot of improvements I'm seeing on this over the the Phenom I had. Um, not only just in technical specs, but the thought behind accessibility of the electronics and the noise was a big one. I mean, with this, I could easily be next to it and work on stuff if I wanted to. Uh, I mean, it's going out in the garage, but I could. With the Phenom, I mean, it, it, it was it was just very, very loud. Hey, what's up, Panzer? Uh, normally working Wednesday, never realized when you streamed. Do it with two, maybe three bits of paper. So you're saying use paper, although it's showing no paper on theirs. Let's try it without, just for fun. Like just to follow along with what they say. I'm not, um, yeah, I've always used paper for leveling and I've probably tested out, I mean, at least eight to 10 of the resin printers. Um, but, oh, you're in Berlin uh, for work stuff or vacation? Let's just, let's just try it. Cause again, I'm looking at this, oops, that's me. I'm looking at this and it just says home the plate. There's no mention between this one. Just says loosen all screws, set the plate to home, press down and lock all screws. Oh, oh, check the gap with a standard A4 printer paper. If you cannot get paper between plate without a lot of friction, and panel level is good. That's so weird. All right, so no, I mean, clearly that's how they want us to do it. So let's, let's try, oh God, it's me again. Hello. Uh, let's try it like this and see how it goes. So it says, put a little bit of pressure. I'm definitely not like aggressively putting pressure. I'm just lightly putting some downward force to make sure it doesn't shift around. Okay, so let's grab the piece of printer paper they included. <clears throat> uh, most frozen printers are factory set. Oh, that's that's nice. Uh, I think it was Uncle Jesse we could show it an alternative leveling method. How much is a new screen? That's a great question. Um, Two ninety nine. So you know, an Ender three and a half. <laughs> that is the. That is the answer. I mean, I, I, there's no way I'm getting a piece of paper in, in between this. Let's do... Um, I'm just curious to see how this feels if I go now without it. And now let's go home. may or may not have torn a little piece of the paper. It's odd to me, man. Um, it's, it's, it's odd to me. I, I'm gonna leave it like that. I have a feeling it's gonna stick like hell, <laughs> but it's what it it's what it says in their instructions. So it's like, that's what, you know, like if I had never resin printed before, I would have no idea. If you cannot get paper between plate without a lot of friction, I mean, I can't get it between the plate period, so. All right, I'll try it. Uh, work stuff conference going home tomorrow. Oh, nice. Any downtime out there to like have some fun and check out, uh, you know, check some areas out? 
All right, we're doing it. Uh, when there is no gap. Wait, what? Interesting. Okay, so they're saying to level it. It's just it's a little different. So there are they are wanting us to actually move it a bit. Um, so. Lila, you're not being a good girl. Okay, so now I can't get it to go further, so. It's just a different way of doing it, I suppose, but. So I think that we basically, like, that seems probably better to me. Um, let's see if I go down one more, which is probably how it is. I don't think I can get it under there. Period. Yeah, and then if we lift it up one, that can kind of get it under with like, you know, quite a bit of friction. That seems right. We'll do that. All right, so it seems like point one, um, is about the gap that we want. So set up success, confirm. All right, just a different way of doing it. Hey, what's up, printing stain? Stein, stain? Stein, <laughs> what's going on, man? Uh, yep, we walked around Berlin yesterday looking at the memorials for the war. Well, yeah, well, at least you get a little bit of downtime. And I always, I mean, I haven't traveled for work in quite some time, but it's always fun. Uh, checking out some of the local restaurants and uh, you know food and drinks and stuff like that. Okay, we are getting so close. Cleaning LCD screen, cleaning LCD screen inside of Forge as much propol to ensure the surface is clean. It's recommended not to use glass cleaner. Okay, we have that. Inspecting that, installing that, testing print, test print. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, since the camera seems like it's a later thing, if like an optional later thing, uh, I'm gonna hold off on the camera. Um, we're going to just install the back on this. Um, install the back, throw a vat in, put some resin in and fire up the test print. So that way we can do, um, do a test print. I just turned it off, that's fine. Unplug. And then, if there is enough interest, we can do another stream. Um, maybe we'll do just like a short print and chill stream or something like that where we can do a deeper dive. Or again, uh, I'm gonna be doing a full video after I've had quite a bit of time playing around with it. But I do think it'd be nice to get a print going um, and make sure that it's functioning. You know, we'll, we'll get it a couple layers in then pause it. Let's go Sony cam. Yeah, I, I didn't see any mention in the build guide of putting the back panel on, but certainly shouldn't be shouldn't be starting up your first print without installing this back panel. piece of cover and then we are we are gonna install this <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm looking to hit you up on discord about the interview for a documentary oh cool man what was the uh what's the current time frame you're thinking of on that just so I have a general idea October or November? 
I mean, it shouldn't be hard to, uh, it shouldn't be hard for me to, you know, get a window of time where we can hop on a call and go through things, but just so I have a general idea of, like, things happening. The only thing out of the ordinary that I have going on in October is, uh, I'm gonna be a guest on, uh, I'm going to be a guest on Hot Makes. Um, I had been a guest on there once before, and it's a lot of fun. Um, Jim from Edge of Techs, a super cool dude, and I like that the goal of it is to highlight cool things that the community is doing. So uh, he asked if I, you know, wanted to go back on, and I said yes. So I can't remember the date I'm going on, but I know it's in October, and I know it's on a Monday because that's when the that's when the streams are. I'll announce it ahead of time as well, so that way if there's anybody that uh, wants to tune in that maybe doesn't regularly tune in, I can let you know when I'll be on. All right, last set of screws. I think when I looked, um, I think that the wireless printing is part of the uh, slicer for this board that comes with it. There's some wobble. I'll have to adjust the feet. Um, but yeah, I definitely, uh, so wobble is something you definitely want to adjust your feet for because if you have a full rat, a full rat, <laughs> I combined vat and resin to full rat. <laughs> I never have a full rat. Um, if you, <laughs> oh, that threw me off. Um, if you have a full vat of resin and you have some wobble like that, uh, it is not going to be a good day if you get, oh, did I? No, it looks right. Why are we not? What are we doing here, Bubba? What are we doing? Maybe this needs to go. There we go. There we go. Um, a little bit of wobble could mean resin and, you know, a two and a half liter vat. It could potentially be a lot of resin, even with a little bit of wobble. So uh, wherever you end up putting a machine that's big, make sure that it doesn't have wobble. I heard my stomach growling. Fun. Well, like I said, I like the uh, I like the look of these panels, but I was just thinking it'd be fun to customize them. I'd be scared too because I don't want to like laser engrave them or something like that, and then have it screw up the panel. Um, but if you had good settings for these, like ACM, uh, you could do some pretty cool designs on the side. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's. Turn it again, like this. Woo, hey, what's up, Dutch? Uh, around October for the interview, looking at finishing up by February. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not going to Earth, so I'll be around. The only things I've gone on is, again, uh, the Edge of, or the Hot Makes stream, which, you know, it's just one day. Um, and uh, my parents are coming out to visit the first week. But other than that, yeah, it shouldn't be an issue for me. It's not as big as I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, and make sure it's level two. I should probably get the bubble level. I think we're good for this first go. Um, but yeah, when, it, when I get this thing out into the garage where it's going to live, I'm going to get a bubble level and check all of the things one more time to make sure everything looks good. So it looks like, yeah, it wants us to clean the LCD screen, inspect the VAT, install the VAT. Cool. Let's do these last things. Oh, you will be at Earth. And yeah, I'm, I'm sad I, I can't, I just can't go. Um, 
I hope everyone has an awesome time. It's going to be so fun. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab a... I'm going to grab two things. I'm going to grab a clean rag because the microfiber I have in here, I use for cleaning all sorts of stuff. So there's probably already dirt on it. And then let me grab a bottle of... Uh, I have like Elegoo standard resin in the garage. Hi, Delilah. Okay. Do, 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 do. Microfiber. Hi, Delilah. Secured the package. Hey, monkey. Hi, you look so cute, huh? Okay. So, yeah. Woo! All right, let's go. Tools, manual. Let's get you up there. I wish I could go to Earth. You'll have to make a trip out here eventually, Maker, uh, or Viking. <clears throat> Especially, uh, I mean, you know, when you're able to, of course, it'd be awesome to meet you in person. Yeah, I think that uh, the price on this right now is 1300 which I also agree uh, is substantially less than I thought it was going to run. The original Phenom was like $2,000, and it didn't have nearly as much... Um, it didn't have nearly as much going on. So it looks like you can't just keep tapping. You have to wait for it to hit where it's going, then tap. Or give it a second. Can I hold it? Nope. Hmm, not my favorite. It'd be okay, I think, if it had like a 50 mil, but the fact you have to like, wait. Okay. Uh, it looks really good. Say hi to the puppies. I'm gonna take mom to Dr. Pacheco. Have a great week. Okay, Lisa, uh, hey, thanks for hanging out. I hope you're able to get, um, you know, things figured out with the Saturn. And like I said, when I'm done gathering the rest of the footage I need for it, if you need me to take mine apart to get some footage of, uh, of the inside board for you, I can definitely do that. Uh, and we are gonna stream Monday. Um, so if you're around, definitely, drop by. Um, I should have that scheduled by Saturday latest, but hopefully sooner. And it should be a laser stream, so it should be fun. All right, clean that off so there's no shipping dust or debris. I'll leave out the sidewalls for the time being, otherwise you will get in trouble if you want to put the forge down or put it somewhere else. Oh, you mean for moving it? I think it'll be okay. Um, I mean, it's heavy, but I think it's I think it's lighter than the Phenom, uh, the original Phenom I had. And uh, we also have a furniture dolly. So realistically, I could just get it from here to ground and furniture dolly it out to the garage and it should be fine. Um, but yeah, that is definitely something to consider. It's not as easy to move. Um, it's not as easy to move. So yeah, we're definitely gonna leave the, um, we're going to leave the, how does this work? There is a USB. Okay, so power supply goes directly into this. I'm just looking at this, um, this is the heater. I'm not gonna use the heater right now, but, so it's got on off switch and then it's got USB. Um, so I wonder if you can control it with, the USB or how that works. I believe the camera, um, does the camera have a full size? Yeah, so camera has a full size USB port um, and there's a USB-C cable right here, which the camera also has. So I'm a little bit interested in how that all is going to work. Um, 
yeah, I'll, I'll definitely set the camera up a little bit later on, and then of course I'll cover that later on. Uh, does it have covers for the extrusion ends? It does not have covers for the extrusion ends. I don't think you can have covers on the extrusion ends, actually. Um, because it sits flush, I don't think it would work. It would protrude a bit. Yeah, I gotta figure out why there's this gap here. Um, I could probably install some sort of a magnet on the top and bottom to help as well. Um, but anyways, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Ooh, that is, that is so close. Okay, let's get the vat installed. Um, that is right here. Big old vat. Definitely not going to pour <laughs> a full vat. Um, Cause I'm gonna run the test print and then it's gonna get moved. So. We'll, we'll make sure it's got at least some resin in there, but uh, it doesn't seem to have markings to show how much resin you have, which is a little bit of a bummer. Um, I really like that uh, when printers have that. So, uh, And then I also don't know which side's the front. So there's a USB. Oh, okay, so USB, I'm silly. USB plugs into this, of course, so that way it transfers, it heats up the vat, so. This has to be the front, right? Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the front. I don't know. This isn't the same that as uh, in their image. But yeah, it looks like, okay. So it looks like where it says Pia Poly um, is gonna be the front going based off their image. So we're gonna roll with that. Um, and then it goes and stops and hits the back. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. Get these nice and tight. All right, opening up the resin. Um, yeah, it's cool it comes with the camera. I don't think the camera works with the slicing software. I think it's like a third party uh, software. Let me see here. Print process, print completion. Um, I'm excited for Wi Fi. It's just going to be nice. Yeah, so there's a separate guide for the Wi Fi camera. Oh, I was wrong. Antenna is not a spare antenna, antenna is for camera to give it better signal. Okay, so yeah, it uses a different software. Um, this is what's used with the uh, Fiberpunk Node uh, software, or Fiberpunk Node. Well, I'll cover that in the video. It's too much, too much right now. But yeah, uh, pour 50 millimeters of water in the bat and see where your max line is. <laughs> what do you mean? Use up the magnet to cover the extrusion and. Uh, handle onto the outside with another magnet. Yeah, I'll figure out the uh, top and bottom scenario. I don't have gloves on right now. Sorry, everybody, but I'm not going to be doing anything with it other than pouring it in, so we should be okay. I usually try to show good habits as much as possible, but... Oh, interesting. There's like two covers on this. I almost wish I did have uh, gloves on because I'm gonna have to tear the lid off. Let me see, I think they included some some kind of glove. Maybe they're just plastic gloves. Like, they remind me of like lunch lady gloves. Yeah, they basically included lunch lady gloves.
fourteen fifty millimeters of water. You mean because the water? <laughs> I don't understand by. You mean the water will leave a residue, so you can see see what two hundred fifty millimeters is? All right, let's go ahead and pour. Oh my God. That is insane. I, I think I poured like half the bottle in and I don't even know if we're gonna cover the bottom. I hope that's enough for, I hope that's enough for the test print. Um, geez, man. All right. So game plan is going to be then when we move this out to the garage that I take the vat out, uh, and deal with that separately. Okay. Um, let me grab a napkin really quick here. Got some spare napkins, wipe down, keep it pretty. I should have left my glove on, but what are you gonna do? Okay, all right. So now, now we print. Ooh. All right, flash drive is going into the printer. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> it's on the opposite side of me. There we go. Okay. Okay, going back, going back, hit and print. All right, everything's tight, right? I know I tightened the vat, okay. Wait, what? Oh, what? I don't know what I just did. I couldn't read that. I wonder if there's onboard storage. It almost seemed like it was talking about two different storage solutions. While we're waiting for the first couple layers to make sure that it's actually sticking, let's download the slicer and take a look at that. I'm kind of interested. bubbles okay uh so that's going which is cool i'm gonna close sorry you guys are gonna get whacked if i let's close this to not try not to bleed too much light in and then let's check out what the slicer looks like i'm really curious uh, uh is your thing so simple and useful as a fill line is it integrated by every manufacturer yeah i know that I mean, maybe it's tougher on aluminum. Um, I'm trying to think like, like the plastic ones, they typically have it as part of the injection molding, but I agree. I think that a fill line should be uh, certainly something that's on all of them. The vat is huge. Like that, I think I probably put half of a one kilogram bottle in there and it's like barely anything. Um, I'm gonna have to start buying resin by the gallon. Okay, so the slicer let's take a look at that for a minute um firmware upgrade uh test pre-slice forge wi-fi resin resin air slicer all right now the very which is compatible with the phenom forge here so they've got a mac and windows version I wonder if you slice in a different slicer, uh, if you can use the wireless aspect of the, um, if you can use the wireless aspect of the Vlare slicer still. Cause we just updated Chitu for the D2 like last week. Um, 
And I'm curious, is the, oh man, let's close out of. So Forge isn't in here. So I wonder if it's compatible with other slicers like I thought. Um, we also updated uh, Lychee. I just wanna see if it's in any other slicers. Oh wait, current version's not the latest. Do we want the latest? I'm wondering if the latest version works for the Phenom. I mean the uh, Prime. Okay, let's do a couple things here. Lychee slicer, please open. I hear it peeling, so that's a good sign. Maybe if we keep making a big deal of such a small thing, they will finally catch on. Maybe. Maybe they will. It would be nice to know, especially on such a big printer, since there's not like an automatic fill, um, to make sure that you're at least filling it to the maximum if you're planning on printing large. I don't know why Lychee's not opening. Um, it's very odd to me. Um, so mirror, duplicate. Oh yeah, we also wanted to update this, didn't we? Okay, so let's see if we go printers. Okay, so there's Wi-Fi control. Cool, so I guess once you connect a printer to here, um, you will probably have access to it. Um, I'm curious about... Machine name defaults. What? That is not. Import profile. Add printer. So this is six inch. It's interesting. Um, Um, where is the slicer stuff? There we go. Interesting. So they're making it seem... Oh, click import profile. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So now we'll go import profile, downloads, forge, open. Now we got the forge and now we've got some of the resin. So deft is like a standard resin. Uh, then we've got tough nylon. Blue is also their tough resin. Okay, gotcha. Profiles in the USB stick. I probably should have plugged that in and grabbed some files beforehand, but at least they're, um, at least they are on here, um, which is nice. Yeah, I'll play around. I mean, the slicer, the interface looks nice. Um, I wonder if they have, I mean, I don't dislike the color. Oh, what did I do? Settings not work. Weird. When you go full screen, it kind of trips out the, uh, kind of trips out the uh, top portion. Okay, let's just go here. So settings. Shadow, platform, language, I don't know what that is. Visual quality, model size, light mask calibration. I don't know what that means. Model reflected view. Okay. Uh, let's, let's import a model. Um, let's go to printables and see. Not a born cube, sorry born. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. We're just wanting to, hey zombie, I know that guy. Uh, 3D models, let's do something from art and design. Um, let's do like this dragon skull.
The model is too small. Is it enlarged to the appropriate size? Oh. Probably, oh, that looks awesome. Okay, so the models look nice. Like, I like the color of how they look and the shadow. The shadow effect's kind of cool. I mean, you can turn it off or on if you want. Um, so you can mirror, maybe. I mean, this is a pretty big part. It's already mirrored, so I don't think we'd be able to see a difference. Uh, duplicate. Cool, that works quickly. On plate, I'm assuming just make sure it's actually on the plate. Split. The current model has no, the current platform is no selected model. Whoa, what am I doing? Wait, split. Does it mean, okay, there we go. So I think you have to select the model. You guys can see it, there's a, uh, file list over here and you have to actually click the checkbox I, it seems um yeah full screen trips out it's kind of annoying that it does that um it could be i'll have to try on a different monitor to see if it's just a resolution thing but so split <laughs> yeah zombie guy is pretty cool <laughs> oh interesting i don't I don't really know why, how do you? Split seems like it duplicated it. If we get another one, I'm, it seems like split is just duplicating. So I don't know if, perhaps I don't know what I'm doing. We'll, we'll put that on the side for now. Hollow, uh, so we can do inner, outer, wall thickness, precision, lattice enabled, honeycomb enabled. Cool. Um, I guess we'll we'll try that. Let's do like a, I don't know, thick three millimeter wall. Let's see how long that takes. I mean, this is a fairly, you know, a fairly complex model. Granted, a lot of resin prints are using fairly complex models, but I'm also curious. I have no idea what the actual. Uh, printing profile is on this. So let's see, one, two, three. It seems like two to three seconds per layer. Okay, so it should be hollow. Yeah, cool. So it did hollow it, that worked. Took a little bit, but I mean, it it kind of is again a complex model. Um, drill should be just creating holes in it since it's hollowed now. Oh my God, flare slicer! What do you what do you mean? It was, it's in there. Uh, can't you just download it from Blair's website? Oh, or you mean, uh, cause it seems like there's a specific one for this. I, I don't know. Um, it's in, it was right here. Um, download and install Blair Slicer. So in their uh, Ford setup guide. Okay, cool. So it seems like you've got Square, circle, octagon for drilling holes, which is nice. Uh, oh, okay, so maybe I thought cut was split. So cut should be, that's kind of cool. Um, advance, cutting, simple cutting. I don't, I don't really, how is this working? Oh, okay, so how much you want. So you can chop up. I don't know how, I don't know how it's deciding. Oh, interesting. Okay, so cut via plane. There we go. And then you can cut, so that's kind of cool. You can chop up a model if you want. Let's see if we go execute. Should chop up our dragon into two pieces. 
<laughs> I couldn't tell if you were uh, if you were joking, Nonstick. You seemed so excited. <laughs> but I'm glad to help. <laughs> That's awesome. If you've been looking for it. Oh, so it doesn't keep the other half? Give me my other half back. <laughs> Maybe there was an option that I missed. Um, cut, reverse plane, advance. Interesting. You think you'd, you'd be able to keep both halves. I'll have to explore that later, but there's a cut option. Uh, text emboss, let's see how well that works. If it works. Um. Annotation running, 100%. Okay, so you type it in here. Um, so let's do undo the one that we did. Well, I guess it's okay, we'll leave it for right now. Modbot, uh, you choose depth, concave, or convex, and you can change, oh cool, so you just change the size from here and it grows. That's kind of neat. Simple way to add text. Uh, that $489 8K, 10 point. Holy crap, I haven't even seen that. It uses Blair Slicer, and it's good, uh, but where I found it, it says it was dodgy. Oh, interesting. So, like, just sketchy sources. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's exit of that. So that's kind of cool. You can quickly stamp text onto, onto any model. <clears throat> I don't know how often I'll actually use it, but it's kind of neat, especially if you're doing a little customizing things and Maybe you don't want to do it in CAD or uh, you don't have the step file or Fusion 360 file and you just have the STL uh, range. Looks pretty advanced. How uh, you can sort of choose spacing or rotation and stuff like that. Um, measuring, how does that work? Uh, two point distance. Oh, click and click. Okay, so that's kind of cool too. Don't know how much I'd use that, but it's still kind of neat. And then you have a repair function. Let's check out supports. I'm curious to see how well and quickly they generate. Let's also, uh, let's also rotate this. Oop, oop. There we go. Uh, do you, do you have a resin printer zombie right now? Oh, some crowdy thing. Okay, support settings. So there's simple, which gives you very little. Advanced and expert, which is a ton. Um, automatic supports. So let's just try platform and see what happens. Wait, how do you... Add delete. I don't. Does anybody see a generate button? <laughs> import config. So you can export and import config settings for the sports. Oh, here we go. All right, let's let it do its thing. <clears throat> Seems like it worked pretty well. I, I don't know um, if I just missed it, but let's see, can we do add delete? Okay, so if you click on it, it deletes it. And if you click on the part, it'll add it. Um, so remove all. The one thing I'm curious about is, um, 
it's interesting that you can't actually see. Normally it'll show you, right? Like shading or the different points where it would add it. At least that's what I'm used to. And it doesn't look like it does that here. That would be nice to have just to get a general idea before you click generate of where it's all going to generate. Okay, let's um, let's take a look at whether it's working correctly or not. We are at 69 likes. Uh, if you have not, please hit the like button. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. Definitely a little stinkier. I mean, it's a large volume of resin. Looking forward to putting this in the garage. Pause, are you sure you want to pause? Looks like the box on here needs a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the latest version of the firmware. So after this, I'll also check if firmware is updated, but let's pause it. <sighs> gotcha. Yeah, I, I resin printed inside for the majority of my resin printing, um, but I definitely, like I had it in the uh, closet in one of my places and I'm looking forward to having it in the garage. Just more venting options. I can open the garage if I'm out there while it's all printing. Okay, so it looks like it's sticking. Uh, it doesn't go higher than that. It doesn't look like, unless I can do a uh, settings things. No, I cannot. Well, that's cool though. You can see that the bottom exposure is 25 seconds. Normal is two seconds. It's kind of neat. It looks like it's sticking though. Um, hi, hon. Um, I think what we'll do is once it's done, I will uh, take a photo, of course, and then post it. It looks like we've got an hour and 43 minutes left, which is quite a while. Um, so we'll probably, I think we've been streaming for a little over three hours. So we'll probably call it in a moment here. Yeah, I think we'll call it. I um, am definitely getting hungry and there's pizza in the fridge calling my name and uh, apparently a uh, cherry Coke, but we did get it assembled on stream. The only things left are basically to connect the heated vat, which I don't know that I'm gonna use for, for just every print. It seems like uh, kind of a necessary until the weather's colder or if I start throwing some, uh, maybe like engineer grade resins at it. And then the camera, I'm definitely curious about setting up and the wireless printing. So that way I can be in here. And if it doesn't show the progress in the slicer, which I would imagine it will, but like just being able to check in on it will be kind of cool. And we could even check in on it on stream probably while it's out printing just to see how the prints are looking on there. So uh, too much resin on the top of the plate. Is there a lot of resin that was on the plate? Yeah, there is quite a bit of resin on the top plate. I'll probably have to use the spatula to kind of um, try to get some of it off, but I uh, it would be nice if the top plate was fully curved or like instead of having chamfers and then it goes flat, just having complete chamfers on both sides of it. That's why I started with the bigger resin to justify the cleanup and all that. Uh, I got an email for my first sponsorship from PCBWay. Nice, congratulations, that's awesome. Uh, resin gives me a pretty bad headache and dizziness, but I don't wear a good enough mask. Oh, wow. Yeah, it doesn't do that to me, but everyone has their own le levels of sensitivity. I have had it once or twice where after printing a bunch of ABS, I'm like, ah, I feel kind of funky. This isn't probably, <laughs> this isn't probably a great idea. But um, yeah, on that note, I think we'll call it uh, thank you everybody for hanging out. Thank you for the new members we got. Thank you for the uh, donations we got. And I know someone got merch as well. Uh, but yeah, everyone just hanging out. And hopefully uh, you have a much better idea of the build process, which is honestly really simple. It's, it's, it was the majority of it was attaching the extrusions, which you didn't, they were already pretty much assembled, the side left and right frame. Uh, and then all the panels. And then after that, it's sort of just standard stuff. It took a while because one, I was talking, we were streaming and there is a lot of bolts. Each panel has you know, two, four, six, eight screws. So eight, 16, 24, 
32 uh, plus plus a bit more so um, but I don't think it's that bad and I definitely think that anybody that resin prints I'm gonna be right out I definitely think that anyone that resin prints um, should uh, have no issues you know kind of putting this in together but uh, on that note, I am going to end the stream. We will be streaming on Monday, and it seems like we'll probably be playing around with a CO2 laser, which should be a ton of fun. Um, we'll do some engraving and some cutting, and then Wednesday of next week, we'll be back to our regular FDM festivities. So on that note, I hope everybody has an amazing uh, rest of their week. Hopefully, I will see you on Monday if you're able to make it. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to everybody later. Have a great night, everybody, or day.